Hello everyone and welcome to Superhero Slay, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris Dillard. And my name is Mike Royer. And this week we're going over Doctor Stranger's Trailer of Madness. I believe Doctor Strangers. <laughs> yes, Stranger Danger. That is for sure. This uh, we so this dropped during. We have a couple that dropped during the Super Bowl. Uh, this was probably I think the most watched trailer out of the Super Bowl. So I think it's huge to talk about and some more details that have come out since then. Uh, slash mm-hmm. rumors. So I'm excited for that. We talked about this a little bit last week, but Michael Keaton is back as Batman. We got a better picture. I showed to Mike, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about what that means and looks like peacemakers first season wrapped up and we're going to cover the entire season at the end of the episode so if you've not watched it there are time codes but uh go watch it and you can come back and listen to this and more more importantly chris we were talking about gundam wing we were gonna i was gonna add that in like, we, we know everything about gundam wing uh, we don't we basically we're, we're basically in the middle of a conversation talking about gundam wing and our nostalgia for the robots and we're like oh yeah we're supposed to be recording a podcast so yeah. we'll just fall right back into that conversation of no. uh I just uh, I always remember the very like the very distinct moment where like I where you told me season two starts, but when you're just kind of like watching it and on tsunami and you're not really like following like some sort of like IMDb page, like I don't know when season one ends and season right. two starts. Like this show probably wrapped up in Japan like four years ago, right? So I'm just getting it over here in America. And like in the season two, like everything like amps up. Like they get like new villains, uh like they bring in like the I think they don't they bring in like the the Mm -hmm. engineers or the inventors or the of the Gundams again they like and yeah. pull them out of obscurity and they like soup up the Gundams again. Yeah. So like, the whole point of it, like it's 50, I think 52 episodes was like 26 a season, which is, you know, standard back then. And yeah. So like they, they, they bring in the, the scientists, there was five scientists. So they had one common idea. They were going to um, crash a colony into earth and give the space colonies freedoms. However, they all like got split apart and went down their own ideas. So that's why we got five different Gundams, but yeah, they're all trying to create, well, it's the zero system, right? The 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 AI in these robots that, that make them become better with the user or something. And only like two people have never died using it. So I I I enjoy it, but like like you said, if you have robots, what do you need to do to those robots over time? Like upgrade them. Got them. Yeah, you got to mod them. You got to have yeah. them fight each other. I was on. Um, I've I've been patiently waiting. Because the next video game that I'm going to dive into and play is Elden Ring, the George R. R. Martin collaboration with uh, FromSoft. And that comes out just in a couple of days, at the end it, of the it, week. It's out. I believe it came out Friday. Uh, no, I think what came out Am what I... came out this week was uh, like Horizon Zero Dawn uh, sequel or whatever. I'm not, I think they're on like the third game or maybe, something. Maybe I don't I'm know. Think... Maybe I'm thinking the the review embargoes were listed. Or oh, something probably. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right, yeah, I don't I don't know much about the Horizon games, but I know people have really been digging into those. Yeah. So I'm just been kind of like waiting. Okay, come on. I, I'm I don't want to dive into a game I don't know anything about. Uh, so I'll just wait for my uh, I'll just wait for my Elden Ring to to come out. Mm-hmm. So I've been kind of browsing like the PlayStation Store just to kind of see what's available for free to kill some time. And they apparently there's like a free to play like Gundam fighting game or something. Is it Gundam versus? Anything. Uh, I have no idea. Cause, cause I, I, I watched the <laughs> I watched the little trailer for it, and the graphics look, uh, the graphics look like it's it's in such a way that it's like almost MMO, right? You know, where mm-hmm. it's just like oh, there's like a world, and we have to be able to render all of this in real time, yeah. so like really crush those polygons down. So I was like, this is either a PlayStation Three game that they've ported to the PlayStation Four. <laughs> Or yeah. it's, a, it's supposed to look this way. I never so, downloaded it, though. But it's just weird to think that Gundam is still out there. I don't know if, like, Gen Z, the younger generation, yeah. knows anything about Gundam. I don't know if there's a popular oh. Gundam series out there that people are talking about. It just seems to be millennials are, are stuck in the Gundam web. I mean, so I know uh, there are several. I, I never miss them. But there are, like, the shows, like, cycle through. I believe they're, like, Gundam Seed. Was it... Um... There's the, I don't know the the Burning Finger Gundam whatever that one was like uh, everyone G has Gun- like G, G Gundam. Gundam everyone has like their own um, you know series of Gundam they like and enjoy and can, and can relate to and ours is obviously mine mine's Gundam Wing and I I would say yours is probably close to that too um, but uh, there's there's probably some more coming out uh, you know was it uh, what is it Gunpla is that what it's called Gunpla Am I saying this right? Yeah, when you're building the little uh, models. Yeah, that's taken over like nobody else's business. So I, I I fully believe this. But like I'll be like the nostalgia stuff. So I actually own the PlayStation 4 game Gundam Versus, Mike. Um, and it's it's just okay. I I I I 
I got it because you know I'm a Gundam guy, but I'm like, ah, this isn't really worth the 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 price. So I wouldn't recommend it to anyone unless it's like under ten dollars or they throw it yeah. in for free. But um, there are too many Gundam games out there. I feel like I, I'm like, but I feel like they're also all still in Japanese. They've not ported them over to the West. Yeah. Well, I suppose if there's a chance for kind of Gundam to have a resurgence here in uh, North America, it's probably going to be that uh, that westernized Gundam movie, right? The jo- mm-hmm. the Jordan Voight Roberts movie that he's yeah. uh, working on. So, and that's if based that on doesn't the... if that doesn't do it, I don't know what will. <laughs> and that's based on the original uh, Gundam um, uh, series, the the nineteen. 19- yeah. That seems to be the – that's the most logical place to start, right? It has the yeah. most iconic kind of robot look to it. And uh-huh. you got to you gotta introduce people to the idea of like, oh, giant robots. Like when you dive into like Gundam Wing as a kid, you're just a kid and you'll accept anything, right? But it's just yeah. like there's a space colony already. They're not even going to explain that. It, uh, there's these robots and like – there's no explanation of why robots are necessarily being used for war- warfare exactly, yeah. uh, but it's just not. There, there yeah, there's go. politics and uh, war, and uh, you don't really care about that because there's big robots fighting each other in mm-hmm. the cities. Oh, big robot. Oh, speaking of robots fighting, Chris, this is a great segue to one of the things that I watched this week. Um, I don't know how it happened. God bless the YouTube algorithm for one time in its life. It started showing me. Um, uh, matches of uh, what's it called? Battlebots. Uh, Battlebots. Oh yeah. man, you knew. Uh, I kept. Oh, thinking I've been of thinking like... about Battlebots this week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's why. Maybe the algorithm knows that you know I talk to you every single uh, week, so it started to put Battlebots in front of me. But it's it, it's been a delight because I remember uh, suffering through the Battlebots show. Uh, back when I was younger, the few times that I got to see it, all the commercial breaks, all the artificial hype to the matches, the the silly little walkouts when they're, you know, coming out to the stage. I just want to see the robots fight each other because the matches only last a couple of minutes. So luckily people have been clipping that and putting it on YouTube and it's been a blast. I saw, I actually saw some legit cool fights where I was like on the edge of my seat watching these sparks fly, these robots flip around. So... That's just my soundboard yeah. for. Um, I keep wanting to say BattleBots. It's not BattleBots, right? No, it is BattleBots. Yeah, it's your yeah. BattleBots. B- BB. There's an alliteration yeah. there. Um, I don't know how it's aired now, what's going on, but I did watch a clip where the announcer was saying, oh, the people watching the stream on Twitch are going crazy. And I was like, oh, is it on Twitch now? I mean, I guess that makes sense. Uh, but yeah, BattleBots is awesome still. <laughs> That's all yeah. I want to say. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. I think um... I was talking to somebody the other day about um, Guillermo del Toro's library, right? He had, he had a movie come out recently. I believe it was a horror alley. Uh, Nightmare, or, Nightmare, Nightmare alley. alley. Yeah. And he was like, he'd never seen, I was like, what about Pan's Labyrinth? He's like, no, I'm like, Hellboy, t- Hellboy, Hellboy 2, no. Uh, I believe he did Blade 2 as well. Uh, he's like, no, I haven't watched any of those. I'm like, I, then why do you like Guillermo del Toro? Like, well, like <laughs> you watch Nightmare Alley and that's it? He's like, yeah, I'm like, you need to go back and like learn where all that stuff came from. Like, you know, <laughs> we were talking about uh, Pacific Rim and he's like Pacific Rim. I'm like, yeah, it's essentially, you know, big Godzilla style creatures come out of the ocean and the humanity has to build, you know, robots to fight them. Uh, and he had no idea what I was talking about. I'm like, <laughs> okay, that's fine. But it, it made me think of Gundams. It made me think of battle bots, like, you know, um, people building robots to fight each other, which is, uh, pretty pretty wild so yeah i i mean gun to gun to me i i love it like i said we, we talked about we had the models growing up before they were you know like when we went to comic i'll never forget the has was it hasbro or namco i think it's bandai, bandai. yeah uh, the the booth at San Diego Comic Con that was just full of the Gundam models like you could buy anything and everything there uh, and it was very very popular so um it, it's just funny to see it still kind of going and i looked it up i believe the newest one is called Battle Mobile Suit Gundam Battle Operation Code Fairy, uh, which sounds crazy, but <laughs> that it, is exactly what I would think it would sound yeah, like too. <laughs> it it, it uh, it's like a, it looks like a, a you remember the um I can't even think of them the Zaku suits from the original uh, ones they have like the little mm-hmm. single eye dots kind of thing it looks mm-hmm. like it's maybe in the main Gundam timeline again or whatever yeah so. I think um every once in a while I, I a couple really nerdy people uh, pop up in my uh, timeline on Twitter. And I remember a little bit of a noise from like a a Netflix Gundam thing that was available to stream. But Uh 
the end of the day, it's still, I, I don't think it's still uh, in the main zeitgeist. People just talking about, what is it, uh, Demon Slayer? I think that's the uh-huh. the OG uh, number the, one it, anime right now that everyone's going on and on about. D- Demon Slayer, this weekend there was a um, Dragon Ball Super Superhero, the next movie. There was a bunch of reveals about that. Uh, and then, of course, I think it was My Hero Academia still going. Um, mm-hmm. and, oh, and, and Attack on Titan. Attack on Titan. I, I know the final season's uh, airing live in America right now. So um, that's that's pretty cool for that. Man, there's a lot of a lot of good stuff well, out there. We'll have to add a uh, – now it's Mike and Chris's Anime Corner because, Chris, right. I think you're bringing just about as much information to this conversation that I usually do. Oh, I, I love it. I mean, it's – I don't get to watch a lot of it very often, but I will never forget uh, when I first moved to Louisville area, Attack on Titan was big, and I, I put it on, and I, I they only they didn't have the dubs, they only had the subs, and I worked at home back then, and I was trying to watch it while also read it, and I'm like, I can't do both at the same time, so I feel like I missed a lot of the first season uh, <laughs> of it, so I might have to go back and re- rewatch that. Um, maybe when it's done, do a, do a, do a quick, quick breeze through on that. Um, but the other thing is, I uh, this is... Uh, a little really little not really uh my oculus quest i've been playing with that all week um you know like oh (laughs) yeah i got a very random text from chris what's your address again thinking (laughs) oh maybe he's sending me a nice housewarming gift something like that and then he sends me like screenshots of my place Uh and then i of course i put it all together i'm like i think he's in the metaverse right now just creeping on my address and that's exactly what it was (laughs) so you can hook your oculus up to your main pc and use your pc's vr um, which is great because I have one for my arcade, and I'm like I can handle some games. So Google Google Earth is one of like the the main free apps for it. And I was like, yo, I can do this all over. I went through you know my neighborhood, some stuff growing up, and I was like, oh, this is this is fun. It's just you know fancy. Does it feel three dimensional, or does it feel like more like you're just in a dome, like a big dome with it uh, projected on it? Because there's no depth map, right, of Street View. Um, yeah, so it starts off with yeah, Street View is just regular Street View. Sadly, that that's mm-hmm. where I think the the fun stops. But getting there was really fun um, because as you you start like literally with the Earth in view, right? Mm-hmm. And you can move in, zoom, rotate. You can actually grab the sky and change the time of day uh, as you're like coming oh. down there. So you so, kind of feel like a god. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was like, I'm gonna come in and, and, and do this. So it was interesting getting there and just like. I knew the the general area of where you live, so like it was fun to experience, you know, L.A. Hollywood Burbank from the sky, uh, mm-hmm. and kind of look. I'm like, oh, I remember kind of when, when I visited you. Here's some places we went. And here's, you know, the the paths we took. Um, so that was fun. We did. I did. I did some of that. Um, I I try. I was invited to Facebook's Horizons World or whatever it's called. Their their metaverse thing. It didn't really do anything other than just put me in like a little sphere on the ground. Um, but I got golf plus, so I've been doing some, some VR golf, Mike, which is fun. Mm-hmm. Um, the thing with it, it also has a promotion with top golf. So other than just regular golf and putting challenges, you actually get to go into a virtual top golf course. Um, which for me is great because the closest top golf is still two, two and a half hours away. Uh, so that was fun. And then, um, I've been trying to think of another game to get, uh, my, my, my boss at work really wants one, and I've been kind of going through. I'm like, yeah, he, he might want some shooting games. Uh, they have a Battle Royale-style game that's in VR, which I think would just make me completely sick trying to play. <laughs> uh, so, uh, yeah, if anyone has any suggestions on anything, uh, do let me know. Um, I, I'm, I'd be excited to kind of hear that and um, yeah, do some of this stuff. Because I was doing uh, the uh, – I have a roller coaster app, of course, but it's got, like, shooting things. So, like, while you're on the roller coaster, little targets will pop up. So that was mm-hmm. fun, but like about thirty seconds of that I get really, really motion sick. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta put it down, walk away. But uh, it's been fun. But uh, there's yeah, there's that all that fun stuff, Mike. So um, anything else you want to add before we jump into uh, literally just last Sunday's news? Pretty much. Yeah, let's jump into it because we're. Uh, I don't want to say we're a week late to this. We saw it. We just mm-hmm. didn't felt like there was enough quite at the Super Bowl yeah. to really dive into a whole nother episode, and we can talk well, about that just really quickly. Uh, yeah. Briefly, I was uh, uh, woefully underwhelmed by all of the media breaks on the Super Bowl. Uh-huh. None of the commercials seem super exciting. Do you and like some of the, crypto uh, or electric cars? Because <laughs> yeah, that's that, all you're getting. 
Yeah, that was the that was the what yeah, that was the big money spend right. I do have to say though, as as much as like crypto and NFTs is uh very very all over the place and everybody has their own opinion, I thought the strategy of just the bouncing QR code was actually really smart. It was like the one thing that uh the people watching the game at my place really kind of gravitated to because like what is this what's going on they spent money on this everybody starts becoming marketing executives uh trying to analyze if this is a good commercial commercial or not oh, yeah. uh, but they got enough traffic to uh crash the site and um i saw a lot of people had hot takes of just like oh they're so dumb they crashed their site but like I, I went back and i looked at that like url just like a couple minutes later and so it was fine like you know, it always crashes for some people. It doesn't crash for, you know, everyone that gets through. But well, I'm not being a crypto apologizer. I just thought it was a clever commercial. Well, I, I, every, the, the, the big point of that was everyone was watching, waiting for it to hit the corner, right? Like that's all the DVD commercial or the DVD mm-hmm. screensavers where it doesn't hit the commercial. Um, commercial wise, I would say for me, the biggest uh, thing I remember, I remember uh, actually the Austin Powers commercial, the Dr. Evil uh, and, and the actors coming back. Um, for mm-hmm. that, that was entertaining simply because um, the the age range in my office is very uh, all over the place. Uh, so like the older people remembered and thought it was pretty funny. I'm like, I right, we can talk about that. And then um, I'm also a big fan of Larry David, even though he was a crypto commercial. He was just like you know such a pessimist on everything. Uh, throughout, play the pest was not anything about history. He's like, we'll. I feel. Eh, I, don't I, know about I, that. I feel like he hit the perfect uh, middle ground of just like he probably doesn't care about crypto at all because he's already rich, right? Yeah. Um, ridiculously rich, probably one of the richest people in Hollywood. And he was probably approached saying like, oh, we'll give you a ton of money to do this crypto commercial, right? And you don't even have to say you like crypto. You're actually specifically going to say you don't think it's good. I mean, yeah. obviously, in the context of the commercial, you're supposed to imply that it is going to be good. But like, wow, yeah. celebrities are going to get their money. They'll, yeah. they'll, can, they'll, they'll do whatever. Can, can, can you come play yourself where you just tell us everything's a bad idea uh, for the whole mm. commercial? I'm like, yep, yep, it sounds good. Um I believe that uh, we talked about last week, the Jurassic Park had a commercial in there. Um, Warner Brothers and Sony didn't bring anything. I mean, there was really hardly any media or multimedia TV slash movie stuff on there, I feel, this year, right? Like, kind of. Yeah, and on top, on top of that, I saw a lot of these commercials start to get shown to me early in the week on yeah. uh, social media in the feeds. And then I had the keen eye of knowing uh, this looks like a Super Bowl commercial because it looks very polished. There's a celebrity in it. And this is the first time I've seen it, and I just scrolled past it to be like, oh, maybe it'll be new. But it always, it already felt old by the time it got to the Super yeah. Bowl. So uh, yeah. it's we- it's so weird to be here every yeah. time, always complaining about Super Bowl but, commercials. But so, it was it was happy if you if you are if you're in LA and you know you want to see the Rams win, they won. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was gonna say you 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 live in LA. How was how was the town post? Uh, LA victory because uh, you know where I live, everyone wanted not LA to win. They wanted uh, <laughs> Cincinnati, Cincinnati to right? Win. Yeah. Well, down closer to the the stadium and more of the urbanized areas of LA, there was definitely some partying. I saw some pictures of uh, people graffitiing uh, um, metro buses. Uh, so I don't think things got too out of hand where it was something LA had never seen before, but it's like the next time, right? It's the next time they go because the Rams will have now added some fans to the roster after winning the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So the next time that they get to go, you know, that's when things uh, should be intense again. Uh, I think there's a Super Bowl coming up. I don't, why do I talk about sports? I don't know anything about sports, but for some reason I feel like there's a Super Bowl coming up that is somewhat close to Los Angeles so maybe if the Rams make it to the next one, maybe they'll have a, a good fan presence at that one. I don't know. Yeah, I couldn't. I could not tell you anything about sports ball. Uh, I just know um, the Winter Olympics are wrapping up, and I don't know much about those either this year. Um, so uh, yeah, we got that going on. So let's jump in. I, we 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 we've barely. I'm gonna have to add actually another time uh, code in here, Mike, because this is Super Bowl um, talk and not Moon Knight talk, even though. You know, it's only been about five minutes, so uh, <laughs> we can jump into this. So I'm gonna I want to start with the Moon Knight trailer, right? So Moon Knight had a, a trailer, and I will I will say while this is only a 30 second spot here, the full spot here, there's no extra online. Um, it's interesting to see uh, again another visual of Kanju behind 
um, you know, Mark Spector or whatever, whoever he is in this in this role, and a little more Ethan Hawke. But overall, still not really sure what the show's doing. It didn't feel like a story trailer. It felt more like a teaser again with a couple new clips, but nothing really fresh out of this. I feel right. I, yeah, like I'm curious. I'm, I'm really curious what a, a very generalized Super Bowl audience thought of this Moon Knight teaser trailer, right? Uh, because if you're a just a casual audience out there watching a football game, I would guarantee you probably don't know who Moon Knight is, right? So you're just watching this clip of Oscar Isaac that you go, oh, that guy looks familiar. I think I've seen him in something. He's like running around looking like a superhero. You probably don't even know if, it, if it's a TV show. You don't know if it's a movie. Yeah. And it probably doesn't all coalesce until the very end when you see the Disney Plus title card. And you're just like, oh, okay, that looks interesting. Uh, yeah. so this and, is going to be a bit of a sell. Well, I, I've heard, uh, you know, people, I've, people who don't know are very excited uh, for it. And I think it's because of the actors, Ethan Hawke and Oscar Isaac, right? I think mm-hmm. they're like, oh, this looks a little scary. Um, so maybe it isn't superhero y. Um, but you know, at the same time, you know, people, uh, like I just kind of overheard in, in my office and, uh, were like, yeah, this is, uh, interesting. I think, I think we could watch this. And I think it's the actors involved with it rather than the, the story. Yeah. Cause they're not giving us any story at all. Um, the only thing I can think of is there's one shot here where Ethan Hawke has, um, two scale uh, or a scale on his arm that seems to be moving. Like the tattoo was like animated mm-hmm. on his arm. And, uh, some people are thinking he might play the Egyptian character Anubis, which might tie it all together here. Um, because I believe Anubis weighed what the, the weight of hearts versus uh, a feather in like the mythological context of Egypt history and, and deities. So the people think he might be playing like, uh, the Egyptian God Anubis or something like that. So, um, yeah. Maybe. Couldn't get yeah, much else out of this to be completely Yeah, the honest. TV the TV spot didn't do much for me. It was later in the week where I think a Kevin yeah. Feige or a producer on it, maybe it was Feige, is uh, quoted saying that this is going to be like, oh, the darkest thing. Or I don't know, mm-hmm. remember what the quote was, but they were insinuating this is going to be a dark, serious, intense show. And I think that's just kind of like a producer talk similar to like when they were talking about new mutants, right? Mm -hmm. They're not making like a horror property or like, you know, something dark and twisted. uh, Yeah, they're just amping up kind of like the drama and the intensity, which you can feel definitely in that first uh, longer length trailer that they uh, that they gave us. So it's good. It's good to know that like. They're at least trying to fit like this uh, spooky tone, but mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not expecting yeah. to see anybody eviscerated. <laughs> no, no. And then um, the other, it, I, there's some images that kind of came out from this, and none of them are really revealing. I think the coolest one here is a, a visual of a uh, Khonshu. Looks like he's walking down literally a hallway of uh, maybe like some sort of storage facility or something here. Um, there, there is uh, reported that the actor F. Uh, Murray Abraham will be voicing Khonshu as well. Um, so I don't, um, well, I'm, I'm excited to hear it. I think we'll report on that more when we hear it, but like overall, uh, they are leaning into this, um, this moon deity, if you will, a little bit here. They're, they're doing the beak, they're doing the skull, they're doing, you know, the crescent moon staff. I think, um, it's going to be very interesting to see this come to fruition really when the show drops, uh, in, in March. So we are like about a month and a half away, a little under for, so, uh, hopefully a new full story trailer, uh, comes out in march now the big hot ticket item of the super bowl was in fact the doctor strange in the multiverse of madness trailer now i will tell you first and foremost they only put like a 30 second spot on the actual show and the spot has different footage than the full trailer that they told you to go watch online yeah Uh, and if you were still grilling up the hot dogs and you're just trying to make sure that you caught kickoff you missed this because i i totally missed it chris kind of just let me know like oh yeah there was a doctor strange trail i was like what are you talking about (laughs) i i was here for the coin flip i was here for the kickoff i didn't see nothing yeah uh, I, I could tell Mike was confused whenever I brought it up. Like, what, what Doctor Strange trailer? You're lying to me, you idiot. I'm like, no, no, no. It, it, it pop, popped up. And then I had to go watch it online, which is great. But I'm like, I don't want to like turn off the Super Bowl when everyone else is over at my house to go watch the trailer. I'm like, I'm going to go to the basement real fast and, and check this out and come back. So uh, we were able to watch it. Um, the TV spot was definitely, I think, I'm going to say, a very interesting choice to pop in um, for the, the trailer because... It's a lot of action, right? It's bright, flashy lights. Um, we get to see Doctor Strange and magic. We get to see some... It's not... It's Gargantos, tentacles. And then we get to see probably, I think, one of the bigger reveals here 
is um, the Illuminati, if you will. Uh, and what is, I, I guarantee you, Mike, Patrick Stewart's voice in this TV spot. Which yeah. Which is enough honestly, to make anyone pause and watch. Yeah. I, I missed it. I totally 100% missed the voice connection the first time I watched the trailer. Uh, and then I started to see like uh, the rumor mill pop up and I started to see people saying like, oh, Professor X, Xavier. And I was like, okay, I get it. Like this seems to be like a council, you know, mm-hmm. Illuminati. Professor X wasn't that. They're just like making a leap, right? Like are they just seeing like a silhouette with a bald head? But then I was like, oh, it's the voice. They, they Patrick Stewart is like literally in the trailer. I guess that makes a lot more sense now. Yeah, and then, and then the, the over the shoulder, like obviously he's wheeling up in his chair and you get to see – the very you know stiff shoulder pads, the bald head, the silhouette of Patrick Stewart as Professor Xavier. Yeah, said. and I think that was one of the differences between the two trailers because I watched them back side by side before we started recording today, and I watched the uh, full length trailer first. And when you hear Patrick Stewart's voice, it kind of just cuts to the next scene. But in the TV spot, the camera kind of trucks back a little bit more, and you actually do see like the skin of his bald head, not just yeah. like a straight up silhouette off in the distance. So. They're yeah. very much inferring, and I think they want you to definitely know that it is um, yeah. Xavier. Yeah, and, and this is still a TV spot here. We're we're we're, we're gonna burn through. There is, um, you know, Doctor Strange unleashes what appears to be what I'm gonna call the equivalent of the um, Ultron Gundam, Mike here, the two dragons out of his hands uh, on whips, if you will, uh, <laughs> or snakes. And then I think to me the biggest reveal is there's there's zombies in this. There is a zombie Strange. Um, at some point in this and whether it's him or somebody else i i I don't know um what's going on it is just wild to see this like this gross kind of doctor strange version who is like you know he's rotting he's a rotting corpse doing magic and stuff like that and it's Mm -hmm. kind of creepy it has it has everything in it which is kind of what you would expect in something with multiverse in the title you can't go sparse right with something entitled multiverse because if you did, you'd have to have some sort of like story element that was just like, yeah. oh, we only opened up the multiverse for like half a second. Only yeah. one thing came through. Yeah. Now we got to deal with this one. Like, no, 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 and this is breaking. There's like visuals in the trailer of like skyscrapers like exploding yeah. and like freeze time, it's, you know? It's not as, I guess, um, isolated as the Spider-Man multiverse was, right? In, in, mm-hmm. in No Way Home. This is, this is I think, a little far more far-reaching uh then we will, and you know, thanks to Sam Raimi and his history and in, in horror. Now, when you go watch the full trailer, some of these shots aren't even in there. The zombies aren't in there. We get to see what appears to be um, some sort of bandage creature yelling. There's um, essentially rotting um, a universe where some. It looks like it's kind of decaying a little bit, right? Like a, like that. Um, you know, Wanda is talking to to Strange. That was interesting. Uh, I'm just going to kind of kind of jump to the part here. Um, there are Ultron drones in this, Mike, uh, which I didn't see coming a mile away. I did not see Doctor Strange being escorted by Ultron robots uh, in this movie at all. Like, this is yeah. I think, blowing my mind a little bit still just to even say that out loud. Yeah, somebody. and you really have to. You really have to wonder, uh, are these drones being uh, resurrected kind of from our own universe by, you know, a magical entity? Is this from another multiverse? Uh, I got vibes like, you know more about the Illuminati than I do. But when I see an Ultron drone escorting a prisoner into like a unique environment, I keep thinking of the... uh, what's the jail that like kind of what is it like hank did it hank pym make like the this like quantum jail that people yeah, are going in it but was this the, doesn't the seem quantum yeah. yeah the negative that, that's that's what i was thinking of so is well, that the, what this is <laughs> well right before the ultron drones walk him through there and i i i'm gonna be honest i've gone through this frame by frame uh, things. <laughs> uh there is an iron man uh in a, a sphere like there's some statues that look like they're iron man based mm-hmm. so um there are theories that you know maybe there's uh, a multiversal iron man we've talked about it being tom cruise I, I, this doesn't lean to any um you know things to that but also a couple shots later it looks to be an iron man uh fighting uh wanda at some point like like powering up and looking angry uh and and blowing through some some stuff uh some people think it's a captain marvel variant um i i believe it is a if if i could say with the ultron drones and this i believe it to be a an Iron Man variant, uh, a superior Iron Man variant, if you will. Well, it uh, seems like everything would be on the table, like we said in a yeah. multiversal setting, but also 
thematically story wise right you know if you remove yourself from the end world and like you you know imagining yourself writing the script right you know don't throw something in the story that doesn't make any sense thematically right you know we see in the trailer that dr strange is kind of talking about the things that he's accomplished and also the the bad things that he's done while he's been the sorcerer supreme yeah. or i guess that's t- technically wong is the sorcerer yep. supreme now right yeah. so if if we're talking about the, the consequences of his actions well you know you know tony was part of that uh, yeah. Lots of other people were caught up in his web. So I would yeah. think if we're going to be seeing variants, it would be variants of things that he's done in the past. Yeah. Or, I mean, I, I'm going to lean a little bit backwards and say Marvel has an Illuminati in their, their comic book verse. Now, what if the, they take in the MCU to the Illuminati of the multiverse, if you will, right? Professor mm-hmm. X, yeah. Iron Man, cause... you know, they, they could even do a Black Panther. They could do a Namor. They could do whoever they want in here because those are all people part of this. Now, they could probably change it up. The poster does show um, Captain Carter's shield in one of those shards. So people mm-hmm. are thinking maybe she's in this. Um, who knows? Maybe even one of these stranges is on on the council, right, as well. There, there's a lot of, like you said, th- this is this is not a small multiverse. This isn't, oh, Doctor Strange is fighting um, a villain he's faced before. This is opening up to multi versions of strange. There are things that we've seen in the history that have been like altered a little bit that maybe what if could be setting up for us. I, um, I, I don't know what to expect literally out of this is, is Wanda yeah. the villain is Wanda the hero. There are two Wandas at one point, right? Like one with like, like blood splatters on her face, consoling the other one who's on the, like, you know, with her, uh, Scarlet Witch mask on who's on the ground. I, I don't know what to expect. And in the same night, I'm putting an asterisk on everything in here, Mike, because <laughs> what if they're just messing with us in the trailer? Like, what if this is not literally in the actual movie, like some of this? or Yeah, or to the changes? extent, or to the extent, right? Yeah. You know, maybe they we haven't even seen a single clip from like what mm-hmm. might be even in the third act, right? Uh, I think the big question I have here is everything in this trailer seems insane, right? This is all over the place. Everything seems earth shattering, you know, uh, it could up in everything about the MCU. So does the end kind of reset maybe some status quo? Is this kind of really shaping up to craft a phase of the MCU? Is this going to be just an isolated Doctor Strange story, or is this going to spin out, you know, into the Disney Plus series? Is this going to be affecting Loki in his next season? Uh, I'm just curious how big this is going to spiral because this is this is feeling and looking like a big event, right? I mean, yeah. uh, if you're showing glimpses of Professor X, I don't want to assume that this is setting up mutants, right? But I could easily see Doctor Strange. Oh well, in my world, there's people with powers, you know, not necessarily assuming you know patrick stewart is now in the mcu he's just going to show up on this council right and also like reed richards he's a very important uh figure of the illuminati and we haven't even seen him introduced at all within the mcu so is this going to be really the very first time we get to see him is this establishing the fantastic four like i think that would be kind of crazy (laughs) yeah i i I 100 percent believe that he's not in his world he might be in a a world between worlds if you will Mm -hmm. um now but the question for that would be is are they going to bring in is this a John Krasinski fan casting that they maybe go forward with or do they try to bring back actor in Gruffid from the original Fantastic Four to sit in on this role as like a, a throwback yeah I, I feel I feel like that could be uh, maybe so they, uh, the best thing to do just because so it feels like he's not going to impact the future movie that they'll have down the line yeah exactly and that's kind of one thing I'm like oh, they're they're going to use the historical aspects of this to, you know, they're casting, they're using, you know, uh, Patrick Stewart as Professor X. They're not saying this is your new Professor X, uh, even though they have a choice of like um, James McAvoy as well. Uh, the other rumors I'm seeing all sorts of this. People think Deadpool might be on the poster. Uh, of course, the Mephisto uh, fanatics <laughs> are out in full force again. The Book of the Vishanti. Now, I, are you familiar with this item if I said this out loud to you? Oh, God. It does sound extremely familiar. Like, I've heard, and that's not like a normal, that's not like a normal everyday yeah. word, but I've heard it before, and I so, don't know why. So, the Book of the Vishanti is the anti Darkhold, if you will. The Darkhold's dark chaos, destruction magic. The Vishanti's light, healing, whatever. This is your yin and your yang. And, and people mm-hmm. think that maybe, maybe that's the MacGuffin of the movie, Mike. Uh, they're looking for the Book of the Vishanti to undo maybe some of the Darkhold stuff. 
Mm -hmm. I don't know. You brought up Mr. Fantastic. You brought up up Superior Iron Man uh, or Captain Marvel. Uh, The other thing is uh, Cthon. Cthon is is an interesting um, thing here because people think he's also on the poster with the shards um, that that we've included in our show notes here. Um, Cthon is essentially the writer of the Darkhold, the creator of the Darkhold. So whether he's in it for like maybe a flashback or is he possibly, um, you know, having Wanda do his bidding in some because there's two Wandas right I, I assume one of them's good one's bad or or maybe they're both bad but I don't know but there's an interesting thought here that maybe he would pop up along this um I I honestly after sitting on this for a week I still don't know what's happening uh and I and I love it I absolutely love it like this is like the crazy start of the summer movie we need to kick it off because I believe we're going to be walking out of there talking about the cameos, the action, the craziness, mm-hmm. the absolutely bonkersness of this movie. And you know, um, what, three years ago we, we got in game and we thought that was the wildest the MCU was ever going to get at that mm-hmm. time. So, um, I'm, I'm excited. I think, I don't, I don't think this, I don't know if this movie has legs to be, uh, you know, Spider-Man moneymaker, Avengers moneymaker, but I believe it's got a lot going for it here. I'm very excited to, to see it. Do you have anything else you want to add to this? Because I think this is just... I don't know. I, who would have thought after the generic Doctor Strange... The guy crashed a car because he was texting and driving. And now look at him. He's dealing with multiverses <laughs> and stuff like that along the way. Yeah, this is what a, a photographic memory uh, rots yeah. inside of a sociopath's brain, right? <laughs> exactly. I'm curious if now Thor Love and Thunder is going to seem small in comparison after the last two MCU movies. You know, you got Spider-Man with all these variants showing up, Doctor Strange, yeah. and uh, then we're just going to have little old Thor who's just going on a normal uh, space adventure. He's got, he's got <laughs> war goats, Mike. I don't think he's going to have a normal adventure at all. Yeah, but they're not multiversal war goats. They're yeah. just normal... Uh, as guardian yeah. war goats, you know, yeah, and we've seen, I've I, seen that before. <laughs> I, w- I, I, I will say that I believe Black Panther two will seem smaller than all of these by the end of the movie. Um, <laughs> it's like, what do you mean they're just on Earth? Yeah, and no one's popping through a portal. They're just in Wakanda dealing with kingdoms and and power vacuums. I, I can't, I can't deal with this. Take us back yeah, to the multiverse. I can, I can go to CNN right now and see a, uh, and see yeah. a struggle between uh two countries if I want. Exactly, it's too real. I don't like it. Uh, but but Doctor Strange holds first bat. Sam Raimi, um, you know, just very very thrilled to to knock this out. Well, I I assume, um, what do you think? Uh, tickets will probably go on sale in April, so that'll probably be our next trailer. Uh, so this will be that'll be our third trailer. Uh, hopefully, mm-hmm. again, knock on wood, they do what they did with Spider Man No Way Home and rain it back. Don't give us all the reveals. I think this was enough of a reveal to make us. Um, oh, I almost ca- of minds, but I almost caught a spoiler, and I didn't even look into it to see if I was being faked out or something. Uh, it was a screenshot of the uh, the listing of the movie on a like a ticket selling portal. I don't know exactly what website it was for, but it had the cast listed on there. And uh, the caption was like, somebody's going to get fired. So I was like, wait, what's this? What am I looking through? And then I start noticing, oh, it's a cast list. Somebody's getting fired. I see the Doctor Strange poster. I'm like, oh, this is like a spoiler. So I read like one name that was maybe kind of inconsequential, but the character is dead uh, uh, canonically in the MCU. So I was just like, oh, no, is this a spoiler? I hope this isn't a big deal. And I just kept scrolling as fast as I could. So, do, do you remember uh, who? Do you, do you care to say it out loud? Because I'm going to flag oh, this I, as a I, rumor. Oh, I don't want to. I don't want to spoil okay. it or anything. Te- te- so. text, it, text it to me. It, it yes, is, yeah. I, I will. Because I would love to see. Because I've not seen anything like this. My guess is again. I feel people are out here trying to. They're trying to lean on this a little bit more in terms of clickbait and anything like that. Oh yeah, definitely not. I, I text <laughs> me that is not true at all. That is a hundred percent not true. But that care. But theoretically yeah. though, since this is a movie where anything that could happen, yeah. you know, you could see this character yeah. possibly like popping up. That, you know. Not back from the dead, but you know, like, oh, look at you, look at this past trauma coming back to haunt me again. Type. Do of thing. you think it, it, the thing I'm going to ask you is, do you think with this being Sam Raimi, will he touch on his Spider-Man universe again for the first time since oh, 2008? I mean, the temptation would be there, right? <laughs> well, they he they had the actor for a while, so they don't have to redo anything. They've already got everything done. So I don't know. It's interesting to see if he. I think. You know that I think that would be um, a very very you know punchy tease, but you know with Spider-Man No Way Home not even being out yet, um, uh, d- um, 
for purchase. I'm about to say domestically because I'm reading my show notes here. Um, it, it would be uh, it would be bold to put that in a trailer, even. So I would love to see a little flash by, a little a little nod to his previous work in the superhero universe. But mm-hmm. um, no no promises. But I'm gonna if you don't have anything else, let's jump into to Spider Man No Way Home. Do you know that this is now the third largest domestic move grossing movie in the United States, passing Avatar? Not the last Airbender, the the original one. Is that that's a pretty good sign, right? Like, this movie is is out here making making money left and right. Yeah, really raking up. It, it's like we've said before. It's just this confluence of amazing events of like a huge big event movie, one of the most iconic superheroes of all time, Spider Man. Mm-hmm. But then also in this movie environment, right, where people are craving to get back to normal, uh, really wanting to go back to the movies, and there's really only one big flashy thing to see right now and that spider-man right oh i thought you were saying death on the nile (laughs) (laughs) yeah there's definitely other things Uh, in the theater right but this is the really the big pull for like you know audiences and i think all of those things coming together is just raking in the cash now if this movie came out you know not during a pandemic and maybe had a little bit of competition it still would have made a ton of money right maybe not quite as much it still would have broke records though but i am very confident that there would be a box office differential in a different environment but uh yeah it's it's not a surprise that a spider-man movie made money so 100 percent. i think the biggest asterisk i'm gonna ever have to put on this one is it did not get a china release um at all and it's still the number six movie worldwide ever Mm -hmm. now could you imagine if this got a China release, add it like you it could have added another billion dollars in China, uh, and and possibly take, you know, fight Avatar for the top spot overall slash in game. I think it could have. I honestly think it could have. But like you know, take the pandemic aside. I believe China is the thing that uh, no China release is, is kind of holding this one back. But um, it, it does. I don't think it has enough legs. They have to make what here ninety more million dollars to get to in game. And then a hundred and or yeah, a hundred and something, eighty million yeah. to get to Star Wars. But like, in game being above this, not a big deal. That's no surprise. Star Wars: The Force Awakens also not a big deal. Yeah, I mean, doing doing my best not to be a tribal over here, but it does feel kind of good that a movie can be extremely successful without mm. the the China yeah. box office, just because um, you know they are very controlled of what they kind of let their their um their citizens see in that country yeah. and you know there's talk of a you know genocide happening over in that country yeah. as as well it, so it's nice to know that maybe we don't have to kind of bend to the whim of a country that's maybe not doing right. good stuff and of course it's not like we haven't cast our own so it's, you know the united yeah, states we're isn't not, we're perfect no, either yeah but it, well, there's it, no reliance <laughs> on it when they're doing their mathematical calculations yes, exactly yeah. and also even if you strip the country names out of it right if country a you know is really upset because their movies are being dictated by country b like that's annoying right and Mm -hmm. country b doesn't want their movies being dictated by country c or whatever so uh yeah it's always interesting crafting a worldwide movie maybe now they don't have to be so worried about tailoring it to a specific country just make a really great movie and sometimes that's all you have to do yeah and i believe none of the marvel movies this year um have hit over there maybe even not disney either uh i don't know i don't know what the i haven't looked into this i could probably go to google search it and find an answer to all this stuff but i mean it's just interesting that you know they're still uh they they are forces to be reckoned with these uh these disney superhero movies over here so um spider-man no way home good for it loki the show uh, has cast or i guess added not cast uh two uh, season two directors uh J- justin benson and aaron moorhead who are going to be up, uh, known for their upcoming work on Moon Knight, which we talked about at the top of the show, and uh, directed episodes of The Twilight Zone. Um, mm-hmm. So as Kate Heron is not returning in the showrunner, these guys are not doing showrunner, but they will be directing the episode. So um, that probably means that Marvel, uh, Kevin Feige, the producers, have some faith in these guys on what they've done with Moon Knight to put them on Loki uh, Season 2, right? Um, yeah, I'm down. I'm down the clown. Did you watch I've, The I've... Twilight Zone? I was gonna ask. Uh, no, not what, what is that? Was that Peacock or Paramount that those were the new ones were streaming on? That like it's yeah. the Jordan Peele one, right? That's the yeah. one we're talking about. Yep, yep. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. I haven't watched. Uh, I haven't watched any of them. I've just been in this. Uh, in this Wednesday night CBS. lull now, right? Like uh, Boba Fett had started to retrain me to watch things on Wednesday. And now yeah. I'm just like, ah, oh, when's the next thing? I got to wait yeah. for Moon Knight. 
Disney Plus was supposed to promise me a future where I would have something, have something near you to watch every Wednesday. And now yeah. I have to wait till the end of March or beginning yeah. of March. When is it? I don't uh, in the March. I think it's like the <laughs> yeah. 24th or 30th or something like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I mean, it was that. And then, I, you know, it, it, we were hashtag spoiled, Mike, because we had Wednesday was one and Thursday was Peacemaker. Now that they're, everything's mm-hmm. done at the same time. So I'm like, uh, now I got to watch other TV. Yeah, <sighs> uh, man, I'm going to go dive into the Jackass series I downloaded, which is also, I believe, on Paramount Plus, uh, by the way. Mm-hmm. But they, they recut yeah. them on Paramount Plus. They're not apparently the episodes they ordered. They like for some reason did some cutting or maybe removed some content. And so they're all out of whack over there. So not that it matters. There's no canonical story for Jackass. <laughs> but I that, can't follow this season of Jackass at all. This doesn't well, make any sense. Well, in season, everyone knows this. There's like in season one, there's an episode called, um, was it Bam uh, beats the hell out of his dad all day or something like that? Mm-hmm. Well, apparently they, they cut that episode and like half of the skits are in different episodes now. So like the whole episode, like where he does it to his dad all day, is not even there. Like it's in just diff- different episodes for some reason. And that was like one through line of that whole episode. So <laughs> I don't know. The one time you had a chance, you ruined it. Uh, this kind of flew under the radar, I think, this week for some people. But uh, and for the Obi Wan Kenobi show coming May no yeah May twenty fifth, uh, John Williams is returning to write the Obi Wan uh, the theme song for the character Obi Wan, not the not the show's mm. music, but like the theme song for the character Obi Wan. If that makes sense. The- the themes, the the music in the Disney Plus Star Wars shows have actually been more prevalent than I thought they would be. Mm-hmm. And I think it's because it's the first time now that we have a Star Wars series out there, you hear it every week, multiple times. You know, sometimes you can hear it in the opening. Sometimes you hear it sting at one point in time in the show. Uh, and you get used to them and you get comfortable. Like, I know what Boba Fett sounds like. I know what the Mandalorians sound like. So in Boba Fett episode, whatever it was, and the Mandalorian sting comes yeah. at the very end, I'm like, okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to see what he comes up with for Obi-Wan. Yeah, Ludwig Goranson has done the music for... Uh... Mando and Boba Fett, who he also worked on Black Panther 1, I believe, too. So I think he did a great job. My thing about Boba Fett, I didn't know the song had words to it, uh, right, until the last episode of Boba Fett, the theme song. Yeah, they're <laughs> literally saying Boba Fett, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, like, like literally that's it. I'm like, oh, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, John Williams, again, uh, instrumental, uh, pun intended, on creating the music for Star Wars, the sound escapes of it being you know orchestral classical you know just huge and like when you think star wars not only do you think lightsabers mike and 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 fearsome you think of the music right the Mm -hmm. the theme song alone um the cantina band song alone just put that on repeat i mean also like obi-wan a very pivotal character in the star wars universe he is besides luke skywalker he's like the oldest character you know just an invention right for yeah. the star wars ip it, weird it's always uncomfortable saying ip but, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah so like yeah bring in the og star wars guy for it well exactly like i think you know um between him and I, him and anakin including the clone wars uh tv show and rebels probably have the most amount of screen time right if you include all the canonical yeah media, what's the so. um what's that is it duel of the fates is that the yes. kind of the darth maul song? i'm just yeah. waiting for something like that again that was mm-hmm. that is a hype song yeah. uh I, w- I would love to get something like that again yeah th- I mean, that was um even even no matter how you feel about the phantom menace as a whole uh john williams he he turned it to 11 like he he, mm-hmm. he put it out there and I, I agree um i can't I don't think I could pick any songs out of two or three, right? But that was, that just takes me back to the 90s whenever, like, you remember when Star Wars had a cross promotion with everything and they had it, like, with Taco Bell and you could get, like, the (laughs) Pod Racer toys at Taco Bell or whatever. I I, I never had Taco Bell around, but, like, the one time I'm like, I need to have something Star Wars related here. And it just takes me, that, you're you're right. So, um, you know, thank you, John Williams, for, for doing that and coming back for this. Very very excited for that. I'm excited to also hear if Luba Gornson is doing the um, the theme music or they've got somebody else to do it um, mm-hmm. for, for this. So um, did you also know um, the reason – May the 4th would have been a good choice, but May the uh, 25th is, is the theatrical release for the original Star Wars when Obi-Wan first showed up. Like that's why they chose mm. that date. It's so like, it's almost like May 4th is a totally made-up holiday that just kind of sounds like something they say yeah. in the movie. Yeah. I just always thought May 4th was such a bizarre holiday because it's like – 
it just kind of sounds like something they said in a film. It has nothing to do with the yeah. fucking universe. It's so well, funny. I wouldn't say it's a holiday either. I, I'd, I'd use that term sparingly. This is yeah. The it's like of, all of yeah. it's like all of the Batman days that mm-hmm. exist. There's like one every quarter. <laughs> Star Wars, I would give because May the Fourth be with you. It sounds like Mike Tyson saying it a little bit. Mm-hmm. But like May 25th is the date, the theatrical date. I believe um, 77 to is it 45 years? I think the 45th anniversary of when star wars came out so um yeah yeah cool for that uh news that has my wife excited for possibly getting a netflix subscription is the return of stranger things after Mm. several years of being absent in the zeitgeist yeah they are doing one of the stupidest things i've ever seen (laughs) early schedule here mike go ahead continue uh, well, uh, it, it's interesting. I saw a uh, NPR article uh, shared the other day that was uh, people are starting to feel the uh, the whiplash between seasons of TV shows now, right? Because it's not like it was back in our day when we were kids, where at most we had to wait maybe four months. Mm-hmm. So usually it was three between like summer vacation when our shows would pick back up. But now when you can binge an entire show in the weekend – uh, if they even keep a yearly schedule, you have to wait 364 days to see the next season. That's like an entire calendar year. And, that, and like and that's Stranger the, Things. Well, that's on a good, <laughs> yeah. that's on a good production schedule. Yeah. I, mean. I honestly couldn't even tell you when the last episode of Stranger Things uh, was released for streaming. I, it's been at least like, I want to say like two, two, like two, two and a half years. Uh, I, I don't remember. Like I have like vague concepts of what happened in the last season. Now a Netflix executive would use this as an opportunity to tell you, oh, just go back and rewatch it. The whole the catalog's there. It's not going anywhere uh, unless it's a Marvel Netflix show, right? Um, Three years, but it was, yeah, it was twenty nine July of twenty nineteen. Right? Yeah, that's insane. I don't remember what happened three you, years ago. How fast were these <laughs> kids growing up? Like literally, you yeah. Can't, like a show with ki- kids, you got to move a little quicker because yeah, they're, they're the, going to age out of it. I think the thing that bugs me the most, I'm, I'm not saying Netflix is guilty of this necessarily, but this bugged me with uh, HBO Max, which is also supposed to be a premium streaming service, right? When season three of Euphoria started streaming, usually when a show uh, comes back, I go back on YouTube and I look for a recap. I just want to see a fan-created recap, right? Because usually they're a little bit longer than what a studio will cut, right? A studio will recap an entire season that's like hours and hours long in like two and a half minutes. It's like, no, I need something that's at least in the 10 minute range right i want like a fan cut that really gets me back not to what just happened but back into the feel of the show right so i did that for euphoria to catch up and i was surprised when i went to just go hit play on episode one of season three there was no recap there was no recap queued up they just are guessing and assume that you knew and remember what happened and then i go to find out they did cut a recap but you have to like navigate through the menus and like manually play it it's just like okay i think you need to realize everybody out there who's in charge of a streaming service how long it's been since anybody has watched an episode you got to prime people to get back into it otherwise for the next hour or 30 minutes you're just asking like wait what what happened? You're on your What's phone going googling on? the answers more than you are yeah. watching the news. And the same thing the same thing happened uh to Marvelous Miss Maisel. The most recent season just landed on Amazon Prime this weekend and there was no recap scheduled up. It just started playing the first episode and like the the for the first like 40 minutes my wife and I are just trying to remember what happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is some recap. The characters are kind of talking about what they just went through in the last scene which was in the last episode, but like yeah, you're just really picking up the pieces along the way. So so this is my long-winded way of saying I hope Netflix realizes it's been three years and we need to be primed again. Yeah, recaps required, Michael. Let's, let's make that hashtag trending on, on mm-hmm. Twitter. Recaps required, people. Get it, figure it out. Get it, get it. Because I agree. Like Stranger Things, um, yeah, the season three. I remember it ended in, in the mall and everyone went their separate ways, right? And I believe, you know, uh, what's his name? Um, David Harbour. They thought he was dead, but now he's in Russia or something. It's going mm-hmm. Vaguely. I'm going to have to, I'm going to have to do this, but they're releasing season four in two parts. And this is Netflix's dumbass, d- not like, like sticking to the binge release model, which, which I think is dumb because the first part comes out May 27th. Okay. And then the second part comes out July 1st. Why not just schedule them out once a week, Mike, like everybody else is doing. Ooh, so I feel you like, ne- don't have to I have feel like two n- parts. 
Yeah, it feels like Netflix, that would be them making like a statement, right? The, if they're going to take their their creme de la creme number one show and put it on a weekly release schedule, which I would honestly be totally okay with. I'm kind of over the binge model a little bit. I just yeah. don't have the time to fit that in my schedule anymore. If the Stranger Things was week by week, I think that would be honestly amazing, right? You would have the conversation slowly evolve over the weeks. People would be talking about it on social media. The theories would slowly be raveling out there. It just wouldn't be one big dump. Um, how many episodes is each part? Did they say? I remember. I know the Duffer B- brothers like released a letter uh, explaining why why they were doing this, and they said like the season was longer or more dense. But I didn't I didn't catch the quantity. I I did not either. I just saw the dates, and I'm like, why? Like it, I I get if it was like you know three months apart, but literally four weeks apart. Like the, you don't have to binge this. Like you could yeah. make it week to week. People would have a longer subscription. Uh, to this, uh, if, if that's the, if that's their goal, yeah. and like you said, they still film them episodically. They film them episodically. Why, if you're this isn't one long movie, don't do two parts. Release it as you have the episodes, yeah. and people and it, are going to be fine with it. And it does make me wonder: does it have kind of like a quote unquote mid season finale at the end of that part, or are they just like kind of oh, this is the middle episode, let's just cut it there? Uh, in my mind, I would say six episodes for me would be the minimum uh-huh. split mark right like if i open that up on uh you know may there. 27th and i only see four episodes i'm gonna be pissed right right it's there. just like four episodes really come on so i looked into this uh nine scripts so i'm assuming nine episodes um and he says the runtime is nearly twice the length of any other season so i don't know how Maybe so, twice-length episodes? So Yeah, I, th- this is the thing. It's been three years since I've seen an episode of Stranger Things. I want to say I remember them being around kind of like the 40-minute mark. Now, if, if they're saying that they're kind of getting like a solid like kind of HBO premium 60 minutes out of each episode, okay, I get it. But this is all, this is all right, just release marketing strategy, right? I'm excited for a new season. I want to join my my cast of friends again on their crazy kooky wild adventure so i'm looking forward to stranger things and thank god the gap between these is not even it's like a month basically because i know it says may to july but it's the very end of may (laughs) and the very beginning of july so really we're looking at like maybe like maybe like five maybe five weeks depending on how the calendar like lays out so if it is like four episodes and that would make me upset i suppose i could try to have some self-control right and just watch them week by week right and then i would be queued up to watch the next ones when it comes out but people are gonna be like (laughs) yeah people are gonna be all over the internet for a month so you kind of just gotta binge them yeah it's it's really done that that netflix is is sticking to the binge model when everybody else um has evolved they've tried it didn't work out they're they're going the early schedule because i believe even you know um like i said star wars marvel you know dc now they're 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 seeing the the, re- the release yeah i mean we'll we'll be talking about peacemaker here in a second but can you imagine if peacemaker was released all at once on hbo max i don't think it would have reached the same popularity mm-hmm. right it needed the buzz it needed people talking about it mm-hmm. and it, and it needed that opening intro to be played every single every week. week for people to be that earworm in their head yeah. um yeah you know. it, it's it, it's it's just really um, yeah, cling to it, Netflix. But I think you're gonna. You know, they don't even do this with Great British Baking Show, Mike. They they actually segment it out. And I think it makes me like it better that way. So yeah, um, and it yeah, like like you just said, Netflix does release some things weekly, but there doesn't seem to be truly any rhyme or reason to it, unless it's attached to like a release schedule, like in other parts of the world, like you mm-hmm. said, Bake Off or. I think some of their reality style shows um, are kind of released more piecemeal. Uh, But yeah, Stranger Things, a big flashy thing that's kind of original to some of Netflix's uh, growth. Uh, Yeah, if they made a statement of a weekly release on that, I think that would be a big corporate shift, right? Yeah, exactly. And and they would, I I don't say they'd probably see better return from it, but yeah. Who are we to tell them what to do? Uh, also, the Duffer Brothers that did come out on this announcement say season five will be the last of the show. So mm-hmm. you know, they're probably spinning that up just as quickly to get that going. So Yeah, um, and I think that was kind of – that's been out there for a while. Yeah. They've been interviewed before saying that. They they do see an end in sight yeah. for the series even like four years ago. Yeah, so yeah, I don't think I was a surprise to anybody. But um, this will be it, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about it more in this summer. 
Are you familiar with the DC's Wonder Twins? <laughs> okay, so uh, correct me if I'm wrong. One can turn into like anything they want, right? Like a no. cool ass animal, and one just turns yeah, into cool. water. So yes, yeah, so the Wonder <laughs> Twins, uh, they were part of the the Justice League for a while there, and they had their little little monkey. One can turn into any animal she wants. Um, yeah, because, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like any bat, like, man, it's like Beast Boy. Any yeah. any useful animal at any given moment, and the other person is sidelined well, with like the worst power ever. And, and her brother can turn into any form of water, but they can't do it anytime they want. They have to put the rings together and say, uh, "That is it's so." Not Shazam, but it's something weird. I'm sure there's so many people that have done deep dives on this because it's such a bizarre yeah. duo of powers. We're not the first people calling out the weirdness of this, right? But yeah. whoever wrote this had to be on drugs. Like, are these characters from the 70s, from the 60s, were they in, into LSD? Like, yeah. what was going on here? Well, they, they were created originally uh, in the 70s for the Super Friends show. Uh, they were not in comic mm-hmm. books first. They were added in the comic books later. Oh, uh, so they were supposed to kind of be more child friendly from the start yeah yeah they were very much very um yeah just like visually you know easy i guess um but like yeah they, they put their rings together and say wonder twin powers activate and uh that that's that's what they do one's an animal one's any <laughs> water of any state so um very interesting uh, so a live action movie is in development for these wonder twins <laughs> from adam uh cycle uh who wrote black adam and he will write and direct this movie so i mean i you you either retcon the character right and you make the other twin have a useful ability or you make it comedic right like we're going to be talking about peacemaker here in just a moment and i feel like the wonder twins would have been like an amazing cameo for that type of world right you could already see like peacemaker and vigilante just making fun of the one that just turns the water while the other one turns into like a gigantic tiger and like mangles one of them right it just seems like so comedic in tone so yeah i mean in 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 later (laughs) later comic books like in like the 90s they were like, oh, um, you know, he one of them become like an ice golem, like like Zayn can become an ice golem or a water mm. monster, you know, something a little more menacing rather than just like he's missed. Uh, I just and, don't see the theme, right? One yeah. turns into an animal, and I, I, I suppose I see the nature through line, but at least make the other sibling all the elements, right? Mm-hmm. Like rock, water, fire, you know, that seems to be a little bit more thematic and more interesting. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, they were created literally by Norman Maurer, who was a Super Friends developer, story editor, and mm. that was he just scaled back their powers. Um, so, I, I wonder like if it was. I wonder if it was animation influenced, right? You know, oh, one of them's going to turn into an animal. We're going to be able to draw all of these cool animals. It's going to be great. Kids are going to love it. Then somebody says, "That's going to take a lot of time." Have you ever drawn a horse before? <laughs> That's insane. Okay. Uh, what should the other one do? Uh, whatever. I don't care. As long as it's easy to draw, then they just drew like a puddle. Well, that's pretty easy. So that's going to be my uh, conspiracy yeah. theory. They they did make an appearance in uh, Smallville, in case you get to that episode. Actually, so. <gasps> what season? Uh, to, uh, <laughs> I, <have> a, <laughs> I gotta a, know. Uh, that's amazing. Season that actually nine, makes... like the end of oh, like, the last man. season. That's yeah. going to be a while. <laughs> I'm yeah. still on season five. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, yeah, anyway, and they're also aliens, by the way. They're not, like, humans. Uh, they're from another mm-hmm. planet. But uh, that, that's coming. Uh, apparently, maybe they like Black Adam enough. They were like, whatever you want to make, buddy. And he's like, Wonder Twins, because <laughs> All right. he liked the you joke. Got right? it. That's fine. <laughs> good for him. Uh, Batgirl, we talked a little bit about this last week, and you were like, eh, is it good? Is it not good? I don't know. But we found a better photo of uh, Michael Heaton in the Batman suit, a little, a little more mm-hmm. up close here. And it looks to be... I think his classic suit, right? Like everything's yeah. black. It's a little, a little more mobile, maybe a little more moving friendly. But yeah, very similar. Not much. If anything has changed in this suit, it just might be finer details. Like on the thigh and the boots, there seems to be more grooves incorporated into the costume. And I feel I, like I remember the suit being a lot smoother in my head. Yeah, I, I think back then they didn't have effects, right? So everything was done in the suit. And he couldn't move much. It looks like this is a little looser, and they'll probably mm-hmm. tighten it up with effects. And I'm pretty sure, I'm gonna have, I, I'm Googling this, his belt was yellow back then as well. His belt is very much just black on this one. 
No. So are we to assume his world has only gotten grittier now? Oh, yeah. And he lost all hope, so he'd stopped coloring his belt. It's got to mm-hmm. be black now. Exactly. But, you know, I, the way the lighting is on his face and Batman, this is very much a, a, a Batman lighting shot as well. Yeah. Like, it's, very, look- it's very confusing whenever Keaton pops up in our podcast now, yeah. right? Because I don't know if we're talking about The Flash or we're talking about Batgirl. And then I always have to remind myself, wait, well, Batgirl Morbius. was the thing that was... Batgirl was the thing that was supposed to be HBO Max, but then it turned theatrical, and then it was like, oh, wait, so it wasn't a series, it was a movie. Mm-hmm. What's going on here? So yeah. I, there's a lot of gears he, that move. He's only in movies, and he's also going to be in Morbius. So uh, buckle up, buckaroos. This is the year <laughs> of Michael Keaton. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know if Batgirl's releasing this year, but Flash is. So. Um, yeah, there's that. So uh, we'll talk about Batman more here in a minute, Mike. Uh, but we are at the end of the episode. At the end of the episode, we said we are going to talk about uh, Peacemaker. So here yeah. we have the, the whole series of Peacemaker. This is not uh, the last. This includes everything, including the last episode of the show that's been streaming on HBO Max. You can go watch, I believe it's eight episodes um, all right now. It is uh, R-rated. And so if you have kids who are not used to um violence swearing sexuality anything don't let them watch it um very much like the uh is it is a continuation of the suicide squad so this is Mm -hmm. this is it so uh before we jump into that peacemaker has already been confirmed for a season two before the finale even dropped um james gunn has been uh according to deadline will write and direct every episode uh so if you love the james gunn isms of this you're going to get even more of them because he didn't direct every episode this season he just wrote them so um he's gonna go full tv after he gets done with guardians 3 uh, yeah it that's seems like bad. he must have really fallen in love with the character and the cast and the vibe of well, his girlfriend's uh, a TV parkour crew. so i mean he's, he's oh a- yeah, you finally confirmed it for me. We were watching when we were watching Peacemaker over the weeks. I kept seeing Hardcore, and I go, "Why does she look familiar? I can't yeah. place her in any TV show or anything off the top of my head." And then it kind of hit me. I think I've seen her on James Gunn's Instagram before, yeah. and I've seen her a lot. And I feel like the setting was inside of his house, so I was like, yeah. "Oh, I think this is like his girlfriend or fiance or yeah. wife or something." But I never, I never looked into it. Yeah. So she now was, you have confirmed it for me. <laughs> she, she was in Guardians too as one of the golden-haired people, uh, the gold people. So you would never have known mm-hmm. it that way anyway. But yeah, she's, she, uh, they've, they've been together a long time. But yeah, Harcourt is, uh, that, that's his uh, girlfriend. So. Yeah, um, season finale spoilers. Let's, let's jump into spoilers, Mike. Uh, let's mm-hmm. let's talk about. I want to say I want to applaud this show for the last episode, just jumping into it and going because I thought there was going to be a lot more build up and very little payoff on this finale. Like I thought we were going to be like, oh, it's an hour. I, I didn't look at the time. Like it's probably an hour long, and there's going to be a lot like the Mandalorian, where there's just a lot of talk and not a lot of action until the end. Um, they just kind of went for it right out the gate. They were like, you know what? We're gonna we're gonna look at all these helmets that peacemaker has pick one uh, they never use the scabies helmet sadly um but <laughs> everything else gotta gotta play in here and um yeah they went they went right and attacked uh all the butterflies and tried to blow up the cow right out right out the gate so um i applaud them for not just you know meandering to get to that point if i if i could be honest so um, well it's fun i i feel like we have maybe a little bit of a different definition of uh meandering uh because there's there's some like awkwardly slow moments in like this big uh this big action pack finale that it almost feels like is James Gunn in the editing booth editing his own show is anybody telling him maybe to like trim a little bit is he getting a little too oh. precious like I think the only reason I'm being so particular here is because I really like what's going on right John yeah. Cena is amazing as peacemaker I love the world that James Gunn is uh, building I like James Gunn's sense of humor but it almost seems like things need to be like pulled back just a little bit there needs to be like a little more finesse overall which is one reason unfortunately i was kind of hoping maybe james would be less involved in season two you know usually that's what happens right a big successful um you know movie director or producer like kind of brings in their number two uh to like oversee you know the project that they've kind of uh shepherded through season one so i thought maybe someone else would come in for season two and we'd get kind of like something a little bit more focused but for example right we do have the funny gimmick at the beginning of the episode where eagerly picks up the helmet and you think he's gonna go to the bar he just flies off into the distance i thought that was funny that was a good joke but then there's this like awkwardly slow moment where they go and they're just 
looking through the woods for the helmet there's like some banter and then like he sees like his ghost dad so i suppose you're playing a little bit of the story there but i was just like can we like get to the i don't want to see them just like looking through the forest i don't care just like if you need the helmet just like go grab it real quick you don't need a whole segment of them looking for it i i think the the important part was here that um augie is not technically dead in his mind if you will i think that was interesting but i don't know why they waited till the end to kind of do that like wouldn't you think like someone who was plagued by his dad that ghost would have been there the whole the whole season or longer yeah i know he's dead now but like he's (laughs) always plagued by his dad and his dad's approval i figured that would be more than just at the end but and i I know i'm glad they set that up because like okay great he may have killed his dad but his that doesn't solve his I almost Problems. thought the dad was going to be like a projection from like a helmet or something. Mm. And then maybe he would have to deal with like, oh, well, if I totally want to get rid of my dad, I have to get rid of the helmet or something like yeah. that. But it doesn't help that I'm also watching the the most like the revival season of Dexter where the entire show, there's tons of segment, segments where like Dexter is talking to like dead people that he like sees, right? It's very mm. integral to the storytelling and they do it really, really well. So I'm like, I'm like oh, there's lots of dead people in the media that I'm watching uh, recently. Uh, and then also there's kind of like a weird slow moment where after Peacemaker is going down to like kill the cow or finish off um, – the the other butterfly that's like run off down there golf yeah like he falls through the stairs and he gets buried then there's like this weird moment where um uh uh, waller's daughter i forgot her name um she's like just following a tablet looking for peacemaker signal and like the camera is like very slow it's just very odd uh filmmaking for that moment of the series so it's it's weird that these things are like popping up but i think it's because like the action was like really awesome like when they're charging the butterflies you got vigilante like with swords people popping off guns peacemakers like smashing people like with a shield like the first time we've really seen him do much with the shield at all right and it's like this is awesome so you have like these high octane moments and then i'm okay when a show like slows down to do like intense like story moments and stuff like that but don't just slow the show down for a search for somebody that's like buried in rubble. I don't know. So well, that's th- all I'm kind of saying is I kind of feel kind of like some of like the the awkwardness of the pacing of the show, but who the, knows? Maybe all of all of these things can be yeah. fixed, right? These aren't like inherent like story problems or anything like that. But I, uh, th- these are just all things that are keeping me from grading it like an A, right? I feel like this is a solid B for me still. I I think I, I agree. I don't think this is a perfect show. I I think of all the episodes, I had the most fun with the last one, and I'm going to mm. disagree with you on on the the thing on the part because I think it's a very much a false flag where it shows Adebayo, that's her name, right? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's digging, right. digging, but like you kind of find that it's actually Goff digging Peacemaker out to 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 kind of flip this. You're like, I'm not going to kill you. I'm not going to fight you. Come with me. Let me let me show you what we're doing before the thing. I think that was. That was relevant in this scene of like we just literally saw everybody kill almost everybody else. I, I will say um, one of the things I'm happy with is you know as the psychic vigilante, as annoying as he is, he was actually competent in what he was doing um, most of the time. And like a lot of psychics, you don't get you know people yeah. who are actually know what they're doing or competent yeah. in like fighting scenarios I, or like even finding the weakness in his dad's armor. Well, you're like, yeah. oh, in, like he's just an season- idiot. But- in season two, I would love to get one of those episodes that's like entirely dedicated to Vigilante, right? Because yeah. he's su- he's such a fully developed character. Like you said, he's got huge power set. He's very competent. He's got a very, very interesting personality that seems to be informed by something. And he like, so I really want to see the background of his character so I can understand him a little bit more because it's kind of hard to understand him like cold turkey right with not a lot of information because like why is he peacemaker's friend because usually like when you kind of have like a doting sidekick that kind of follows like a bigger idol or icon they're a little bit of a simpler human right because they're looking to attach on to something but like vigilante's all over the place i wouldn't be surprised if vigilante had his own sidekick because his personality is so big so i would love to see like Maybe it's like episode two of season two, and it's like one of those things where the entire episode is dedicated to Vigilante, just so we can get a better understanding of him. I, I think we might see his personality speak, but he he isn't like he literally is a he's an imitator, right? He always is trying to imitate Peacemaker, and I think the only reason he's there is because like they both have a lo- they had a love for killing, murdering, and blowing things up like guns and 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 swords and stuff, which you know is is 
I can see them getting along with that, but I, I think Peacemaker is always like looking out for himself at the end of the day, whereas like Vigilante is like, yeah, I'm just going to do what you say and, and kind of chameleon his way into it. Overall, I, I, I love the actors. I think I said, this is a very small cast overall, right? Like they're literally all the main actors are in the opening sequence um, in the dance scene, all the main ones. Um, I, I'm kind of sad Judo Master didn't get more than at the end. Um, or I'm why... glad he's still alive. Yeah. I kept forgetting. Like, he's always on the verge of death, so I could never remember from episode to episode if he was alive or not. Yeah. And, uh, he's got but flaming then he kept, hot Cheetos he, love. I yeah. Don't know. He, kept, he keeps showing up, though, very consistently in the intro of every episode, right? Mm-hmm. So it's I'm glad he's still around because his character is he's so he's so intent like he's so crazy he just wants to kill everything yeah. uh, and i love watching it thrown around <laughs> yeah so I, I don't know i mean i will i, I would i say this redeemed peacemaker from the suicide squad i wouldn't I, I still feel like they're two different characters i feel the the christopher smith that was in literally peace uh the suicide squad is more competent more com- like confident even and a little more uh you know just a shell uh you know very very focused bullet where this yeah was, it didn't feel like the transition was there from like oh you got shot and pulled out of rubble and now yeah. you're this person the th- the the theme of him becoming a new person wasn't super easy to track right like i'm sure somebody out there can do a deep dive youtube explainer of like crafting something together of like oh watch peacemaker's arc through his series like but yeah, how do you go from somebody who just like loves like brutal killing to at the end, you know, he kills his father. Like he's still a killer. He's killing everybody. Like they just happens to be his father and aliens at the end. So like, what is it? Like you would almost expect like, oh, well, like the, the straw that broke the camel's back was they wanted him to kill ch- children, right? Yeah. But he never ended up killing them. He never fired the shot on it, right? So you'd almost expect like there would be like a child in his life mm-hmm. that, you know, came back or something like that. So I, I don't, it's not super clear yet. Sure. How do we, it, how he, he was redeemed? He killed his brother as, uh, as a child on accident, but like, and that doesn't tie into his redemption arc. Like he was like, I'm going to yeah. kill yeah, for peace. But like, because that, that feels very yeah. familial, right? It's about yeah. a brother relationship. So you you'd think, oh, maybe they tie it into vigilante. No, that relationship was never really fostered that much through the show. Vigilante still seems like a very big annoyance to Peacemaker. But then they do have this thing, this moment at the end where he's in the, um, the hospital and and she says to him like oh why didn't you betray like you know why didn't yeah. you keep them alive and like try to like save the planet or why did you kill them it's like oh well i i knew that they would hurt you yeah. so like oh is that the theme then like all peacemaker needed at the end of the day was just friends and then he would stop killing because that theme is not pervasive throughout the show right you know yeah he's trying to get you know, familiar with working with a team, but like he worked with the team and the suicide squad and he was still yeah. killing people there too. So like was friendship the answer, but yeah. So maybe the theming could be a little bit clearer it, in season two. Yeah, it, it, exactly. There's, there's a lot of opportunity in the show to even maybe even dive on that a little more in season two, but like, it's very loose. It, it plays wild and loose with the themes and his characters and who they are one episode and who they are the next episode. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting to, uh, you know, his dad built his technologies. How much, how will that impact him going forward without that? And with his dad, you know, being literally, literally they had, um, the T 1000, right. Being the, the, the guy who played the T 1000, Billy be the biggest racist piece of shit in the whole world. And like he, for some reason, he just pulls that off with ease uh, I'm sure he doesn't sleep all at night knowing that, but like he, he, <laughs> he, he, he nailed that throughout the whole season, right? Like you just don't like him. You don't want him to succeed no matter what, what he does. Um, so he has that group. And then I, I thought, you know, the, the, the butterflies they're you know, based on that radar scene, like in what episode two or whatever, one or two, like all these butterflies are going to die now across the country. Now, how are they going to explain these people dying? Like with bugs in their heads, like kind of thing. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know how that's going to go. Um, I'm just gonna drop to the 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 pleasant surprise here at the end, Mike. Oh yeah, I forgot we hadn't talked about this. Uh, the, yet. the 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 Justice League finally makes a cameo in this to <laughs> tie it into the DCEU at large. And I know we already already had flashbacks, so, but we get um, the silhouettes of Superman and Wonder Woman, uh, and then a full on Aquaman and Flash appearance. While Aquaman, uh, you know 
what's he say? He says, fuck you, Barry. He's like, like it's literally Jason Momoa dropping a couple yes. of bombs on that. The insinuation is Aquaman has sex with marine yeah. life, and yeah. uh, Barry thinks it's real. Uh, Aquaman says... <laughs> Fuck you, Barry. Yeah. Uh, how did how do, I always like whenever these moments happen with the Justice League? I'm always like, how does Aquaman get there? Right? Does Barry yeah. carry him all the way there? Because I, yeah. I I didn't see a body of water nearby in this field in the middle of probably Georgia. Wonder Woman <laughs> uh, would have to uh, fly there too, I guess. If she yeah. worked on or money. Superman. Yeah, I I did think it, like when it showed them at first and they were all in silhouette. I was thinking, okay, this is all we're gonna get, right? Just yeah. the silhouette. I get the joke still. This is like a comedy show at large i don't need to see them right but yeah. then it just focuses in on uh jason momoa and um ezra miller ezra, yeah. and i was like okay well, i get why superman's like uh shadowed right yeah. they don't even know who's gonna play superman the next time he's it, on the screen I thought, that has I, I thought it was vague enough it could have been shazam uh, oh even oh, as well yeah. I, I know yeah, superman i, like, I suppose the double came out says superman but it could yeah. be shazam too and then i'm wondering uh i i would assume gal gadot is just too busy yeah. Right, like uh, no nobody assumes that she's not returning as Wonder Woman, but yeah. like yeah, she's just too busy. You can't bring her in right now. Um, to My- I, I don't really I don't really take much away from the cameo at large. I like I'm not like going like oh this is now in the the yeah. broader uh, DC EU. Now yeah. we're gonna see like Peacemaker finally team up, and this is they're really building out a universe. Zack Snyder's yeah. universe. Like I don't. This yeah. is just this is totally just a gimmick for comedy yeah. that's all it is and if they can turn it into something else in the future yeah go ahead you know maybe the flash movie really pops off you know ezra miller really becomes the focus of a lot of the the bigger all things moving forward trembling. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah who knows maybe maybe more could happen there yeah. but yeah i i wouldn't so, read too much into it it's oh, just comedy the, yeah and i agree with that 100 percent. from uh, james Gunn came out and said like he had jason momoa in mind for this the whole thing that was the, the only person who was supposed to be there Mm-hmm. And then Ezra Miller found out and was like, can I do it? And, you know, for someone who is as weird as this guy is, like he's at least put himself into the Flash TV show. He's now put himself in this. Like he's actually out here. The Flash being the connecting point between these, this stuff is pretty fun. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. you, you're actually the only character who could do this if it is multiple universes. But it was fun. So there's also um, apparently they filmed Batman and Cyborg, but they didn't put them in here. They actually had the footage for it, and James Gunn is like, he's like, I'm not at liberty to say what they're doing with the Flash and or Cyborg, or Batman and or Cyborg. So, oh, um, I think I, that's may- the, the bigger take. Was like, oh, um, so what's that? I, I would as- I would just assume with like with Batman, right? If you look at just yeah. Warner Brothers at large over like the CW and all of these other appearance of the of the Cape Crusader, like. Yeah okay, they got a movie coming out really soon. Let's not go ahead and draw a line in the sand of what Batman should or shouldn't be on screens, like, yeah. you know, for the next couple of years, right? I, you know, because uh, the silhouette of Batfleck and Robert Pattinson, right, are yeah. going to be very noticeable. I think it's um, I, I think it's going to be Michael Keaton. I, I honestly think the Batman in the DCE will be Michael Keaton at the end of all when this is all said and done. Yeah, the, and those ears on yeah, that cow yeah. would be very noticeable as well. Yeah, so yeah. you would be able to determine what they're doing. Yeah. Superman is luckily very an am- ambiguous silhouette. You just yeah. got to have the the cape flowing right. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but Cyborg, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Maybe the, just because all of the the beef that's been yeah. with uh, Warner Brothers and the production of the the stuff that the character has been in so far. Uh-huh. Maybe that there's a, maybe there's a recast happening somewhere down the line in a couple of years. I don't. Maybe Cyborg's being phased out, and like Blue Beetle is going to be the kind of yeah. next like mechanical thing in the universe. It, whatever it is, they filmed it and then said, "Don't put it in there." So that's I think that's <laughs> the most interesting part of this. Whether what the future mm. holds, uh, and then the other interesting part of this is uh, Marvel Studios team filmed the Jason Momoa Ezra Miller scene. They, they they filmed that scene while he's been working on Guardians of the Galaxy three. And that oh. was that was a return favor for them filming. Um, the guy who played Mern, uh, I, ca- I can't pronounce his name, uh, Chuck Woody Awoji or whatever, um, mm-hmm. is playing the main villain in Guardians Three. They filmed his screen test, so the the production companies are playing nice back and forth. Um, yeah, because at the at the end of the day, like these are all just like working professionals, and they probably bounce around anyway. Like the camera guy on, yeah. you know, the next Marvel thing, you know, his next gig is probably a Warner Brothers thing, and then like a Legendary thing and an Apple Plus thing. So yeah. I don't think they, there's no allegiances there. They're just getting work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like we we are very skilled in what we do. We don't have to. There's no there's not a DC team and a, a Marvel team, right? They're all the same mm-hmm. across the board. So, um, yeah, overall, I, I, I don't love the show. It's fun to watch. 
the music choices are kind of interesting um you know you know do you want to taste it will be stuck in my head forever and i've never heard that Mm -hmm. before based on the intro i did see someone did a stop motion with a peacemaker action figure for the intro <laughs> That's great. it was really fun and then i sent you it was resident alien um they were doing the intro on as well mm-hmm. uh with um alan tudyk so it's really fun season two is fine I, i'm just i'll watch it probably but like they like you said it needs to be a better story and probably you know be way more like you know intentional in what it's doing rather than just and yeah. we're going to do it because we can. F- yeah. Funny banter is like always great, but the banter needs to kind of be almost a reprieve from the story. And mm-hmm. sometimes it felt like Gunn was just having maybe a little bit too much fun with like, it, like being yeah. like, I don't want to say like being mean, but like the whole like die beard moment, right? Where he yeah. has to like admit why he dies his beard. Like it felt like this weird, bizarre combination of like, this is a joke because he finally has to admit it and there's nothing he can do about it because there's an alien. But then it's like kind of sad. Yeah. And then he's, it, and That's then the, he that like, is the character's quote unquote evolution for him. But it happened literally in the last episode rather than throughout the season for, yeah. for economists. <laughs> then, economists. And, and then he like, he like breaks his leg, which I just kind of thought was like a <laughs> weird gag that he, yeah. like it didn't really make me laugh. I was just like, okay, he broke his leg. Cause yeah. I don't know because well, he's dumb. I don't. I don't like. It, it's it just was. Like, it was to make sure he didn't go down into the hole at the end. It, like literally, it, the whole thing was to put up because he said, "Don't put on this helmet and be the human rocket." And then he makes her the human rocket to kill the cow at the mm-hmm. end. Like it, it was all very intentional and, and like telegraphed. It there was like I like I said, there's no finesse about it. It was very much like we have to do X, Y, and Z, or else the ending won't work the way we want it mm-hmm. to. Yeah. It still it still feels like superhero television at large, or at least the premium streaming side of it, not talking about the, the CW, is still trying to find out exactly what it's supposed to be doing, right? You know, the, uh, the big feature films know what they're doing, right? Make big, entertaining spectacle that the whole family can go to for the most part, right? And then slowly move the universe on and do something bigger, crazier next time. It seems like on the television space they're they're just not 100% sure what's going on. For a while, we thought that Peacemaker Season 1 was going to maybe be the only bit of Peacemaker yeah. that we were going to see it. Like, oh, is this going to be a one-shot? So, you know, how does this evolve? Where does mm-hmm. it go? Um, I, I was telling Chris earlier this week, like, oh, if I just had to kind of rank all of super vil- villain or, like, comic book television at this current moment... Like maybe my favorite would be the first season of Daredevil, even though there's a couple filler episodes that I think could be thrown out. I think just as like superhero entertainment in an episodic format, that first season was really, really great. And then um, probably the best, though, even though it's kind of a one off and, you know, as a miniseries, the same thing would be uh, The Watchmen, which is, you know, comic booky, you know, superhero y, but it's Mm -hmm. it's really really diving into story at that point in time but also it relies a lot on just remembering what kind of happened maybe in a movie or a graphic novel so there's a little bit of baggage when it comes to watching that so yeah it's even though we have been so far into the uh the superhero like movie franchises for like over a decade plus now right if not two decades uh tv is TV is still very much in its infancy, like on the premium side. Mm-hmm. So uh, they're still they're still working the I, kinks out, and we're here for the ride. I think to me, um, again, I, if we look at the pandemic and release dates, I believe after watching the Doctor Strange trailer this week, WandaVision uh, will tie heavily into Doctor Strange, right? I think we're going to see mm-hmm. this year pick that up a little bit. But you're right, like Peacemaker season two, how does it tie into the DC? plans at large like mm-hmm. uh, can can they even at this point now, now that it's like double tied into the suicide squad in the justice league i, I don't know where it's going to go and and d- will james gunn do it justice or really beat it into the ground i think i think he's good i think he does you know some great work but you know what, like we've talked about a dozen times when you have too much free reign does the product suffer because no one's telling you no or hey exactly. here's some feedback to make it better mm-hmm. uh, and that's kind of where i think yeah peacemaker 2 season 2 needs to 
to just have even if he's just bouncing off of somebody else like hey yeah let's, let's work this together like i i think that's why star wars is so good whether you you love or hate the mandalorian it's still you know john favreau and dave filoni both mm-hmm. together doing it so you're not just one person's not in charge of the whole thing yeah the and you day. know there's definitely an executives that are like reading scripts and giving mm-hmm. notes like <laughs> warner brothers is just honestly i feel like hbo they're just happy that they have a hit on their hands finally they're, that's doing numbers that they can make like little promos about and stuff. So yeah. um, see how it goes. Things are evolving. They're, they're glad they're getting good feedback, you know, <laughs> out of this. And uh, mm-hmm. there's no uh, restore the, the gun verse going on. So <laughs> got that going for them. All right. Well, that's the show for the week, Mike. Uh, we're going to get out of here and people know more what we're doing, what we're up to. Where can they find us at? Mm, they can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok, and you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, we want to catch up with you in the metaverse. In the Where metaverse. Can find you. Find me on Twitter, Valdan V A L D A N, or Instagram, Valdan87. Um, same thing with uh, gaming. People know more about the show, what we're doing. Um, I believe we're two weeks out for Batman um, uh, review. Uh, people can find all that stuff at. Where can they get it? Oh, the home of the show is SuperheroSlate.com. If you have any questions, if you have any concerns, if you want release dates or show notes, head on over to SuperheroSlate.com. We got everything up over there. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to find podcasts. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and you can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store we love hearing from you please reach out let us know what you thought of peacemaker season one are you looking forward to season two uh what type of michael keaton are you looking forward to Mm -hmm. do you want a new bat suit do you want the classic bat suit do you want someplace in between let us know reach out we are here we love you if you want to be a super fan of the show all you got to do is share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy make sure you're staying safe out there in this crazy world that we live in and uh we will be here every week folks That's right. We'll catch you guys next week. Bye. So we might not get a Jurassic World Dominion trailer at the Super Bowl, but I have on strong authority that uh, Lord of the Rings will be there. Um, But that's not the only thing Amazon's doing. Amazon's also doing a Blade Runner live action series. Um, Well, that will not be at the Super Bowl because I read my notes out of order, uh, as you probably noticed and we're just going to let me slide with. Uh, Blade Runner (laughs) is an interesting choice for a live action series Um, yeah i i wonder what the strategy is at amazon because it's definitely a noticeable and recognizable ip but i think one thing unfortunately about the last blade runner film even though it was very critically well received i don't think a lot of people went to go see it and i remember seeing all these headlines and think pieces about like what types of movies people want to see at the box office and blah 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 all of that um, so maybe, mm-hmm. maybe they feel like this is just kind of like a, not like a value bet, but who, who knows? Maybe the, maybe the IP was slightly more affordable as like a premium yeah. IP comes, or maybe they feel like, you know, oh, if we can just make a really good series, the word of mouth plus the, the history of the series, will get it out there. I mean, one thing we do know about Amazon, one thing everybody knows about Amazon is they have an unlimited amount of cash to do anything that they want, and that goes into the Lord of the Rings bullet point as well. So, um, I mean, if you can elevate it, right, and get the series to trend somewhere on the internet, you know, the Blade Runner IP may become, um, I guess, recognizable again. I'm not dunking on it at all, because I know people really love the world and everything, but that's the only thing I remember about the last film is that all the headlines that said nobody went and saw the movie. Right. I I think the headlines for the original were the same way. Nobody nobody saw the first Blade Runner. It was considered a failure, um, but only found life afterwards, um, really. And I think what's great about Blade Runner is the world of Blade Runner. I mean, there's like, what, um, 30 years difference between them, I believe, or so, whenever they they release in, in the world. You know, the ideas of there's robots and, and androids and, you know, they don't know that they're androids or they do. And, you know, what is what is their lifespan? What does it mean? Um, and I believe there's also other planets, right? Like uh, even Jared Leto was on like another planet when he was playing his creepy blind person in his movie. <laughs> Um, heck heck if i know (laughs) yeah but like i'm saying the idea of blade runner there's a lot to be done with it i agree with you um and i just think you know um it might be something that they could do for the less money on 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 a tv budget or or you know and and get more people i don't know you're right it's it's a very interesting choice i mean i already know 
that they are um, they're making like animated serialized versions they've made like short films all in the blade runner universe so yeah you can tap into that pretty well and production wise kind of the the nice thing about it right is uh if you're android or whatever it just they look like people so you just cast an actor you don't have to do anything like that and uh who knows maybe they'll use like a volume type setup Mm -hmm. to do this show right because that's one thing that's great about blade runner is kind of like the rich kind of futuristic world right so um Throw that up on the Unreal Engine dome, right? On that yeah. screen in the background, you're good to go. Yeah, I mean, honestly, uh, to, to not um, does it not be too much of that person, I think a, a Blade Runner prequel um, showing how the androids were created and their use would be very interesting because um, we kind of get into the point where they're like they're working um, and they're, they're hunting down the rogue ones, but we don't know exactly what they're doing, right? We just mm-hmm. never, they're, they're, they've gone rogue and um, Harrison Ford uh, is hunting them and maybe he has one, we don't know, but... I, mm. I think there's an opportunity to like, hey, the creation of the androids, how do we create them? How do we make them human? I, I think there's some, some story in there to, to implement them early on. But, um, you know, we're not um, 100% prequel people along the way. So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll see that. But on the other side, what I meant to say earlier, because I jumped to it on accident, is Lord of the Rings will have a um, trailer for its Rings of Power show during the Super Bowl. Um, there are... Um, I am jumping around again. God damn. Um, Lord of the Rings. So I'm going to, I'm going to switch these notes around. So <laughs> the Rings of Power has a live action. There's a lot of Lord of the Rings stuff today. Uh, Lord of the Rings, um, Rings of Power has some live action. So there's some shots I've seen um, floating around of like people in like, you know, uh, uh, fields and maybe some, some like other places. But apparently um, you're familiar with uh, Galadriel and Elrond in the, in the original movie. Trilogy. Yeah, I, I I'm somewhat familiar. <laughs> yeah, so apparently they will be in this. Um, this they they have different actors. Yeah, because uh, they're like you're talking about the elf characters, right? Yes. Yeah, because yeah, um, they they have like the long lifespans, right? So it would make sense that they would still be alive. Yeah, and also it's you know Kate Blanchett and um, uh, guy who played Agent Smith. Um, Hugo yeah, Weaving. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah Hugo Weaving uh, were, were the original ones. So this would be much younger, you know, the second age, hundreds if not thousands of years before this. So um, yeah, I remember looking at the at the the shots when they were released the other day. It looks it looks beautiful, right? I mean, this is exactly what you would want these first set shots to. I guess they're not set shots necessarily. I think they're more like just screen grabs from from what they've been filming. But it looks it looks great, right? You know, like we just said. Amazon has a ton of money. Uh, if anybody can kind of pull off the budget for the Lord of the Rings show, it's this studio. And we know it's expensive. I don't remember the dollar amounts, right? But that was one of the first kind of news bits that came out after the show was announced that this is going to be like one of the most expensive things on TV. So, um, yeah, and I'm I'm surprised it's coming out so soon. I feel like it was just announced like a year ago and we weren't going to be seeing anything for like five years. But I guess... Uh, Time is a flat circle, and I've lost all semblance of it. <laughs> yeah, well, and also, I mean, I believe that when you submission, but I believe it's supposed to be upwards of one billion dollars for this series, this first season. So, um, hopefully, it looks good in action rather than just the still shots that you can doctor up a little bit. So, I'm hoping that this live action uh, trailer that we get today really, really sells because I think you know that there's, they'll probably spend a lot of money, maybe not a thirty second, possibly even sixty second spot here, Mike, to really you know sell us this. So, I want to mm-hmm. see this. I want to see some magic, damn it. Give us some hobbits and their second lunch. The only thing I can get behind. So <laughs> um, That's coming. And other Lord of the Rings news, this is what I was trying to get to earlier, and I keep jumping over it, is that uh, the movie and game rights for the Lord of the Rings franchise are coming up for sale. Um, I believe, uh, who who made the original movies? Is, is, that, is that Legendary? Leg- legendary, I believe. Yeah. Um, so... The the I think the franchise rights are going to sell, and I believe Amazon is like the first person in line. Of course, they're like we we have the Rings of Power, we want all the Lord of the Rings rights, so we can make everything going forward. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I don't see that being a problem, right? Like, I mean, um, Amazon I mean, that has would be money a, to do it. Yeah, I mean, that would be interesting to see. I didn't really think of the 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 future of the franchise beyond this streaming series, right? I mean, it would make sense to um, make more films later down the line, right? You know, do you expand further back in time? 
you know, past uh, what happens with Frodo and Mordor. I don't know. I'm not a purist when it comes to the Sal Marinian. Sal, I don't see. I don't even know how to say it. The, so the, the the dictionary for Lord yeah. of the Rings, right? You know, I don't really know a whole lot about the franchise, but um, yeah, like you, like we've like a lot of people have said before. You don't spend all of you don't spend all of this money to not do anything, right? So if uh, if Amazon does acquire MGM, if they do get these rights for Lord of the Rings, you know that they're going to be making new stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it's not the Tolkien estate. Apparently, it's the Zanes Company who has holdings in this, and it's valued of around two billion dollars for the purchase to um, to have exploits in film, video games, merchandising, live events, and even theme parks. Could you imagine a Lord of the Rings theme park? Oh, like- I wonder. <laughs> I wonder if Bezos would want to actually build a new theme park or would they just do the thing that every other brand does and just like license it to like universal. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe they put it in the metaverse. Uh, oh you God, know, Chris, go you again, yeah, twice already this episode, I, you're putting out the metaverse. Well, it, it's just funny because I could imagine them being like, Oh, do you want some, some Lord of the Rings NFTs? Uh, oh, you want to own your own little Hobbit hole in, in, in Hobbiton? I, I can see them easily doing stupid shit like that. And, and just, I'm, I'm laughing at it now, hopefully before it becomes true. Um, <laughs> but you know, at the same time, you know, I could see them universal making, you know, uh, uh, very much a, lord of the rings theme park right like they they've done the avatar the movie at disney like why would they not you know kind of kind of do that kind of thing but um uh i i think this is an interesting point here um i it was new line not legendary by the way uh who who did the movies um i would love to to you know dive more into lord of the rings but hopefully they make it palatable for the um commoners such as ourselves uh we weren't like so we're not precious on lord of the rings my precious get it it's a joke um, oh, but Chris. yeah i know I, I'm, I'm trying to make this work here uh but you know at the same <laughs> time, I, I i don't think it's bad it's not a bad universe to go into right like there's a lot here um the the rise the, the extreme rise of fantasy especially like dungeons and dragons and things like that over the past couple of years really makes us like a almost like you know a, a, a pop culture a, a you know have your thumb on the pulse of society and you can easily make lord of the rings even bigger uh 20 years later than the original movie so um yeah i mean i'm excited uh for this so we'll we'll keep you guys posted as we we jump through that uh in uh, weird news um didn't expect this futurama is getting revived mike at uh hulu um a 20 episode season i believe or a return and but um the voice of bender was it john dimaggio joe it's not, mm-hmm. yeah. i think it's uh john, john yeah yeah uh it's possibly he's not signed on for a return as bender yet uh they're apparently still working out his contract um i would say he's probably the most well-known voice actor on the show um that character is very much a staple of futurama uh, when you when you think of it, do you think of him saying "Kiss my shiny metal ass"? Uh, <laughs> yeah, but. yeah, it's been it's been very decisive in my Twitter feed over the last couple of days because um, the uh, the reports are, um, and even John DiMaggio shared this uh, Entertainment Weekly article uh, that stated uh, he is looking for uh, more money to return, yeah. but the other actors that have uh, voiced all the other iconic characters have signed off on the on the money, so. Some people are saying like, oh, he doesn't deserve to get paid more than the other main leads of the show. Mm -hmm. Some people are saying, oh, no, John is just trying to raise the ceiling for all the voice actors so they all get paid more. Uh, I I think the fact of the matter is like, you know, whether or not Bender is or isn't the most popular or iconic character or whatever, actors are almost always get paid on the history of their acting right it's not necessarily always the importance of what they are in the show right it's how many credits they have behind them how busy that they are in a given calendar year right now if, if john dimaggio has been in x number of things more than any of the other voice actors their time is more valuable so you can't just necessarily you know write john off for like trying to be like money grubbing like this is a business he's Mm -hmm. a very talented voice actor and he's really well respected in the voice acting community he made like a whole documentary about uh voice acting that i watched a few years back that was really really fun um so uh, he he is very much i mean if you go look at his his wikipedia or his imdb you will see he is not a 
this is not his he's not a one trick pony if you will yeah what you're trying to say like and i'm not and i'm not saying the other voice actors are like deadbeats or anything like that no 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 they're all still working they're all still doing a great job but it's just like it's up to it's up to a person of like how much they feel like they're worth and how much their time is uh valuable um also but when it just comes to the general news right of more futurama eh I don't really know. Like the original run of Futurama is iconic. It's amazing. It's some of the best television ever made, both, right? But both ev- of them. Every- <laughs> it's already every- been canceled once and brought back. Yeah, but every time it's been renewed and brought back either in movie form or series form, like it's just gotten a little less entertaining to me. Uh, so it, it still has like all of like what you want in the show there, but it just feels like a little less magical and special every time it comes back. So uh, yeah. who who knows? I'm not super excited. I'm not really going to be there day one to watch it as, as soon as it drops. Well, um, but I, can, I, I love Futurama. I would like to see what they do. Cause I think, you know, to, to the point of the last season when it was brought back and ended, it ended on a really, really good episode, right? Like the series finale was almost perfection. The, the time travel loop of, of Fry and Leela being together and, and trying to be together forever. Like that is, uh, an amazing ending to the story because this show has some great episodes, right? I mean, everyone knows, remembers Fry's Dogs episode. Like, mm-hmm. every, like this show, despite it being a goofy play on you know, um, you know what the the future really looks like, it is is still got some some heart heart to it um, with that. And I, I I I'm excited to see where it goes, but I'm not I'm not like I I wasn't clamoring for bring it back, bring it back because it ended on such a really really good yeah note. Um, it is funny though because John DiMaggio voices a robot, and it would be so insanely easy to write in the story why Bender has a different voice, right? Mm-hmm. You know, software yeah. update or, or anything like that. But I, the show definitely won't be the same without John DiMaggio uh, voicing Bender. Yeah. So, well, he's hopefully they of, hopefully they can figure that out. Well, he's on one of your favorite shows you're watching right now, Inside Job. Um, so he's he's that you, you're watching that one, right? Is that you? No, what? My no, friend Brian is watching Inside Job. <laughs> it's, it's a it's a play. It's an animated series on Netflix where they're, uh, you know, uh, making fun of like uh, stuff like the that. deep, uh, the deep state, the yeah. deep state, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but and then I also saw he was on. Da, 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 uh, he's still um, on Disenchantment. Um, the guy who created um, Simpsons, Futurama, Matt Groening, his new sh- mm-hmm. his show on Netflix. He's still doing Disenchantment on Netflix. So um, yeah, I, I'm, 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 I, we'll see. We'll see what the trailer looks like. They could also go back and just redo his voice if they if he ever signed back in. So. Um, definitely not too bad uh, over there. Uh, keep keep it going. Uh, big reveal this week: Obi Wan Kenobi, May twenty fifth release date. Mike, one little one little teaser poster and a May twenty fifth release date. Do you think we will get a trailer today in the next three hours? I mean, that would be great, right? You know, yeah. got to show up with something Star Wars at the what? at the big game, right? Why, why would you give us a poster and nothing else? Because I will yes. tell you right now non-spoilers there is no obi-wan kenobi thing on the on the season finale of boba fett it is not touched at all so mm-hmm. you're gonna give us a poster and a release date you need to give us a trailer next so i feel like this is the next logical step for us today to, to see something here i'm i'm honestly kind of surprised to see it's being released released in may and it's not may 4th you know, Star Wars day. So I would assume May 4th would, if there's not a trailer today, you know, there'll be like a second trailer, all right. That comes out May 4th. Um, Oh yeah, exactly. That would make the most sense. (laughs) Yeah. I I think there's a lot of Star Wars properties this year that, you know, they can, they can, they can do some reveals with. Um, But yeah, I I think um, a teaser today and something fuller closer to May, perfectly fine. Uh, They usually do it the same month anyway over there. So We'll, we'll let you know. We'll, oh we'll man, May Fourth is even a Wednesday too. Like mm-hmm. they yeah. really were teed up for that day. Oh, well, man. yeah, they, they they people were 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 thinking about it, but I again, I think Disney as a whole with Doctor Strange coming out that week, um, I, I think I think it's some some uh, synergy yeah. going on there. That yeah, week, I so. can see that. Uh, also in Star Wars news, uh, for the Ahsoka show, uh, actor Ray Stevenson, who you might know from Thor, he was Volstag, the bigger guy. Uh, mm-hmm. in Thor movies or he was the Punisher literally in Punisher Warzone and other movies has been cast in a villain role for the show um, but he is not Thrawn so don't get your hopes up Mike he's not going to be blue Da-ba-dee. hopes Da-ba-da. are not up hopes are not up <laughs> okay well I mean I, do you think Star Wars does blue characters really well lately <laughs> I've been liking the blue yeah. character so far. The blue, the blue character so far. So 
Um, we don't have much else on this, but I figured I'd throw it in there and we'll talk about it more when uh, that pops up. Possibly a trailer for Ahsoka on May the 4th, Mike. I would not put it past it. No, oh, yeah. Uh, that is our news episode for today. We are going to jump into the Book of Boba Fett. This is the series finale. This is the last episode. This is all it. All cards are on the table. The whole book has been read. It's been closed. Put back on the shelf. We're going to talk about it. So spoilers. Ahoy, people. If you've not watched it, go watch it. Come back. Then you can listen. Um, and if not, you know, whatever. You can listen to it. But I don't know why you would listen to us before you watch it. That's a weird thing to do. But, you know, teach their own. Um, so the Book of Ophet ended with a series finale. Uh, what I liked about this episode, Mike, is that it is nonstop pretty much action from the get-go, right? Like it, mm-hmm. it picks up with the last one and it just goes and it goes and it goes, which I really enjoyed. However, what I'm going to say I don't like about this episode is this town feels really empty if he's protecting the people of it. Um, yeah. <laughs> there's like there, no one else around, but the small group of people he's fighting with and against. Yeah. This is a very strange show overall. And this is maybe something that they'll have to figure out with star Wars in general, moving forward of how much are we going to see of this desert planet or just desert planets in general? So Chris, I know you have a little bit more yeah. uh, knowledge of the star Wars universe than I do, or just you've retained a lot more of it than I have. Um, there is like basically two desert planets in Star Wars, right? There's Tatooine and then like Jakku, which is just yes. kind of talked about a little bit. So it's mainly Tatooine, right? And that's where yeah. Mos Eisley's is. And um, where, what's the city that Boba Fett's trying to take over? Um, what's it called? Mos Pelgo? Mos, Mos no. Pelgo or Vespa or Mos something? It's a Mos yeah. something, right? Yeah. So this desert planet, right? It's getting so much love on Disney+. Plus. We got the Boba Fett show. Mandalorian was there for at least like a season and a half. Uh, yeah. it, it looks like the Obi-Wan show is at least going to take yeah. place a lot on this planet. So uh, why is this planet so important? They're, it yeah. seems like they're, they're doing their best to try to flesh it out, but like, yeah. I don't really care about um tatooine anymore i want to go other places in this galaxy far far away well it it says something when the best boba fett episodes are the ones where he's not in it right um and it's not because it's the character is bad it's because we actually got to see you know uh, mandalorian was on that halo looking spaceship uh learning how to fight and then literally we got to see the luke skywalker um planet and what yavin for wherever he's training the jedi at right like and they're very visually different it's it's something to do something to look at and while you know i i don't know if they filmed this during you know a, a lockdown or that affected why they only have several locations but they only have like maybe what four locales in this ep- in this whole series really other than those two episodes where they're like we're at the um the party place we're at the, uh, you know, um, I said Jabba's yeah. palace, but it's Boba Fett's palace, or we're at the, uh, out just in the desert, hanging out on yeah. the, the it, sands. It, it really shows when, like, Fennec has to go on her last dish effort to drive to Mos Eisley, I think, where yeah. the, um, where the Pike Syndicate is kind of their bases on the planet. Mm -hmm. And like, she's driving from basically one desert town to another and you can't really tell much of a difference. And she's just, I was like, Oh, is that down the street or how far is that away on the planet? That being said, like this is, this is the funny thing about the book of Boba Fett. I could go on and on and on and criticize the hell out of this show. And I think it's very deserved a criticism, but I still had a fun time. And I think that's because, especially after season three of The Mandalorian comes out, right? And then subsequent seasons come down the line. When you really zoom out, The Book of Boba Fett isn't even really a TV show. It's not even a standalone property. It's almost like this little side story in The Mandalorian that just we happened to focus on for a couple weeks. Well, to to that point, they did say Book of Boba Fett is Mandalorian Mm 2.5. They did set that expectation early on but now that we're we're at the end of it that hindsight really says yeah this really is mando <laughs> yeah. 2.5 yeah and, and, and yeah because it was seven episodes right yes, seven episodes yeah right. so but really just five episodes and then a lot of that was flashback and i'm not saying the flashback was unnecessary right i actually yeah. really enjoyed the flashback with uh with the Tuscans, but that really didn't circle back around. I kind yeah. of thought like his adoptive family would at least come back up thematically. And mm-hmm. it, it really didn't. Uh, but I had a hell of a time yeah. watching the rancor, right? Yeah. I mean, there was that reveal shot that I'm pretty sure was practical. Or there was, there was practical. a lot. Yeah. There was a lot of, uh, 
rubbering and puppeteering for that rancor mm-hmm. in some of those shots. So I, I applaud them for like, oh, this is probably the same model they use in Return of the Return of the Jedi, actually, mm-hmm. and and just do a, a nose ring on it because that was really really cool to see that. I agree. I yeah. agree. The, the were rancor. those uh were those big destroyer droids? Are those brand new, or did those show up in the Clone Wars? The, at those some were not point in the Clone time. Wars, but they okay. feel like huge droidekas, right? Like the the, yeah. the holy droids, because I think they yeah. rolled out, didn't they? Before they, they maybe they didn't. They never uh, no, rolled out, but they. Feel I didn't like see it. any roll, but they yeah. had the big shield and those things. Those were cool. Those were tanks. They did a really good job demonstrating like the kind of the limitations of what our heroes could do with them. Yeah. You know, when they were shooting the shields, I just kept thinking, just walk through them. You know, we saw yeah. in the prequels, you could walk through the Gungan shields, right? And then yeah. like, oh no, they actually couldn't walk through those. So the, the, the uh, lightsaber couldn't even cut through it. Um, yeah, it, it was, much was higher a, power. It, it was a presence. Yeah. I, I mean, um, I, at no point did I not think um, the, the people of Freetown were going to show up. Um, you know, it, it was like one of those things where, you know, oh my gosh, is that is worse? Oh, something else shows up. Oh, something worse is... It was very much a, a back and forth, right? Like a, like a lob and a, and a toss. Yeah. Like, also, kind of like... like bad man. <laughs> when I saw the people of Freetown, like, show up, I was also just kind of confused because, like what they've shown of Freetown is like four buildings. Like how many people could be showing up? We don't have any context of like how big any of this stuff is on this planet. There was, a, there was about so, six people who got out of that car. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. So, yeah. I just kind of had to sit back and like kind of let it wash, you know, wash over me. This very much kind of feels like, you know, when a brand new like Marvel movie is going to come out, there's like a companion comic book that you don't have to read. Right. But yeah. you know, it'll explain why C3PO, has like you know a red arm arm, right nobody nobody you don't need to know but it shows up in the movie that's really what book of boba fett really feels like to me and and it would literally be a book then it would be a comic book so i i think the benefit here is that the book of boba fett doesn't feel like it's robbing me of more mandalorian right like Mm -hmm. i don't feel like oh i have to wait an extra year now to see Mandalorian because this is taking up its slot. You know, we got yeah. to see it earlier in the year. So I think that's, what's really being beneficial. Yes. Well, I, I would add to that, that it also, I mean, it, to, to, you know, good or bad, it gets to the point where is Grogu going to get back with the Mando? Yes, he is. They already did that in book of Boba Fett. We don't have to spend two or three episodes <laughs> of the Mandalorian doing that yeah. because he's already with him. He's got a spaceship that has a little cockpit for him now mm-hmm. they, that goes fast. Uh, so like it's actually building us up like some pre prequel or, or not some prequel, some like preliminary stuff for book of Boba Fett or Mandalorian season three that we don't have to go into. It, they can just go right into the story. It is kind of strange to me, though, because the Book of Boba Fett basically resets the status quo for Mandalorian. He had this big emotional scene where he had to let go of Grogu, right? And Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody was um, prepared for that or exactly how long this situation might last. And you would think they would put all of this really important Mandalorian stuff in his own show. Now, obviously, you have a Disney Plus subscription already if you're watching Mando. Nothing's stopping you from going to watch this. But I think it's going to be very, very funny to to witness somebody who's just very casual only watching Mandalorian. They boot, they boot up season three, and then they show you the previously on, and you're just like, wait a minute. I don't remember this from season two. Wait, he, he's back with Grogu? He's got a new ship? What is going on here? So... Uh, I think that will be funny. I don't yeah. think that's going to be the majority of people, um, yeah. especially with our very online world of people telling yeah. you, oh, well, no, at least just go watch these. They'll probably, before season three comes out, they'll say, like, recommended viewing. And even if they don't have the whole show, at least two or three episodes, the last two to three episodes of the of Book of Boba mm-hmm. Fett on there, right? Like, Because um, I will say... The, one of the cool parts of this was literally seeing Boba Fett and Mandalorian with their jetpacks and their rockets and their, their blasters. Just taking yeah. taking guys. Like, that's a video game moment to me. I'm like, man, that would be pretty fucking cool to play, wouldn't it? Because even, like, <laughs> Boba Fett's doing his his knee rockets and shooting left. Like, he's doing all sorts of shit out there with his, like, he's got his whole arsenal at his disposal, and he uses yeah. it in this episode. He's not holding anything back. He shoots the back rocket off. Like yeah. you said, the knee rockets, flamethrowers abound mm-hmm. from... Cad Bane and Boba Fett. Oh yeah, he's he's they're they're up in the air. They're zooming around. They're doing stuff. You're watching the Beskar armor get shot. He's using it as a shield. 
you know, um, it was it was pretty cool to see. Um, I did I was disappointed that at no point did he drive um, the, uh, uh, the I think he didn't drive the dark saber into the eye of the robot at any point, did he? He just like stuck it in the top of it. I'm like that'd have been cool if he took down one of those big droids with the light dark saber right through the eyeball, like mm-hmm. and just blinded it. But it's um, funny I keep I keep forgetting that uh, Mando even has the dark saber. Like I'm sure somebody was just when they were watching that scene of just use the dark saber. I bet that could yeah. break the shield, and then he busts it out and it doesn't work to me i just keep forgetting that he has it so it wasn't that much of an addition uh for me but it is it's cool it goes to show you how desperate he is right he's pulling out every all the stops yeah yeah every everyone had had a good chance to shine in this um you know i there there was i didn't expect the actual team to turn his back on like the other people the other things so like Mm -hmm. everyone literally betrayed boba fett in this uh, all all the clans um and even like they they killed his little his little uh, pig face dudes off the cliff. Oh which was yeah, they fell. <laughs> uh, and but but you know I thought that they were gonna kill uh, Kersantan at the end of this. I was like, oh no, they've got him. But he he fought his way out all the way back. And then you know, literally everyone everyone made a dramatic entrance down that damn out that down that street at some point, right? Like, and by the time they got to the end, someone else came up behind them. I'm like. This is like a parade of people walking down this alleyway. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of the very, very, very end, is that Timothy yeah. Oliphant? Yes, that's I was going to say, are you, are you excited that, you know, um, you know, Cobb Vanth isn't dead and he's going to get some robotic enhancements uh, along well, the way, too? I think what they should have done, like if they were going to put him in that tank, they, I think they, they, a Cad Bane should have visibly wounded him a lot more because it's mm-hmm. very obvious that he just gets shot in the shoulder in that episode in that standoff uh whereas his his other you know friend gets like shot like right in like the gut or the chest or something like that so i feel like if they wanted it to really be a reveal maybe maim him a little bit more or something or make us think he is actually dead yeah well they they kind of they didn't really allude to him being alive until the end so it could have gone it could have gone either way uh but you're right i'm excited to see what what robotic parts he's getting um and how Mm -hmm. that comes into effect in the mandalorian uh i will say Cad Bane's not dead, right? His his chest plate was still beeping uh, after he got slightly stabbed with. with yeah, I was I was trying to figure out what that like. What does that mean? What does that mean when his chest plate beeps? Is that yeah. him sending a signal to somebody? No, I, I, I think it's a, I think it's like a life. Uh, like like Darth Vader's chest plate, like it's like some Maybe. real life uh, thing. Hopefully, I mean, I I mean, I know it's Star Wars, it's a futuristic galaxy, but hopefully they don't step in the in the sticky mess that uh, the Kingsman Two did, right? Mm-hmm. Of that crazy like headshot medication, right? Of like, mm-hmm. oh, we put this inflating bag around your head and you can first survive a shot to the brain. Yeah. It's just well, like, no, don't do that. You can't just like make everybody come back to life, you know? Right, but at the same time, like he he slightly got stabbed. There was like if you if you're talking about. If you want to kill him for good, maim him better than just a slight stab wound when he's on the ground. Mm-hmm. Plus, he's an alien. I don't know his anatomy, so on and so forth. Yeah, that that is always kind of like the the mushiness, right, of the Star Wars universe. It's just yeah. like, well, we don't know where Cad Bane's yeah. vital organs are, right? Yeah, and, and then um, you know, again, Finnick Shane is already half robot because he saved her. We saw that a couple weeks ago. So mm-hmm. um, it doesn't bother me. Cad Bane. I'm glad they uh, didn't kill him, but you know, it was glad to see you. Know, the 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 stick fighting actually come back into play here later late late in the game, um yeah overall like you said it's 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 not the best thing in the world we could literally go through and and drag this through the mud if we wanted to but I don't want to because I had a good time in Star Wars I I wish a, the sets were different um but like at the same time I'm like yeah this is pretty fun I enjoy it's this. a good it's a good time killer right you know yeah. we're just out here trying to pass the time waiting for the next like big premium thing mm-hmm. and this just felt like you know they have it this this is honestly probably one of the advantages of like you know having all of these characters and the volume and set around maybe this show only gets made right because it is in a desert environment yeah. right you know it's really easy to kind of set all of these shots up but um, oh. Yeah, thematically, story-wise, I would say everything with Boba Fett is extremely weak. I don't think anybody watching this show cared whether or not he completed his goal by the end of like mm-hmm. taking over the city because like he's supposed to be a good guy. He isn't a good guy. He's a mob boss. He does want tithings from people, or maybe he doesn't want tithings from people. He wants to make the city a safer, better place, but he's okay with crime as long as it's not spice it's just very unclear who boba is 
Uh, they say he softens. He like they yeah. go out of the way to say he softens as he get older. But you know, what does that even mean? Is he getting like nicer? But but I, as long as they're throwing raincores in front of me, I guess I'm having a good time. I I am horribly disappointed that Finnick Shan killed everyone in that tent and did not bring the leader of the Pikes to Boba to to have his way with, to like mm-hmm. maybe even feed to his raincore. Wouldn't that have been fucking like? sweet justice or like- yeah and then maybe the camera like pans over and there's like a like a like a tuscan raider yeah. like headpiece or helmet or maybe like yeah. a tuscan raider kid or something like that playing around just to kind of bring it full circle but yeah we never really have that moment like that no no at, at no point did i think that the tuscans were actually killed by the motorcycle gang or whatever the, the desert I, it, it just kind of like phoenix chan showed up killed everybody and that was it i'm like well that's disappointing like that's yeah. I wish there was you know, more to that. It's done, but I wish there was more to it. Yeah. Also, I didn't. I didn't know. I I I thought the motorcycle gang uh, did it. I never assumed it was the Pikes, right? But when the Pikes revealed that they did it, I didn't care. Like I was yeah. like, I don't care who who killed yeah. the Tuscans nece- necessarily. Like, mm-hmm. and I you kind of and the way that they alluded to it, Cad Bane was just like, oh, you he doesn't know. Like yeah. I expected like. Tamara Morrison to like fucking go into like a rage and go animalistic. And he only really does that when he's just trying to like get out of that one kind of blown up bar. Like, and that's more of like, he's really amped up because he's just trying to save his own life. Not really. Cause he's trying to get revenge, you know? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And he, well, he did there at the end um, to Cad Bane. I guess he he channeled that with the stick. To... Yeah. But Cad Bane was just like a hired hand. It's not even really. Revenge. Well, yeah, but I'm just, but I'm just, well, it was, <laughs> Watch, watch, uh, watch the Clone Wars, and it is revenge. Well, it's it's revenge towards Cad Bane, but not yeah. for his adoptive yeah. family. <laughs> yeah. You will, you, you'll learn a lot more about it. I, I, Cad Bane again. One of my favorite characters, I think. I think um, so. I'm glad. I hopefully he's not dead. Um, he doesn't need to be in everything, but used sparingly. I think he's a very, very vicious presence. Um, I recommend him in Clone Wars. I think um, the last thing uh, I have is I'm really, really concerned. I didn't think about this. Was Max Rebo in that bar when it blew up? Where's my Max oh, Rebo? Oh my god! Maybe he's got little jetpacks. Yeah. Like, and he just took off. <laughs> god, I hope I hope he he had a day off. He just had a day off, and he didn't go to that gig because if he was at that gig, <laughs> well, I'm gonna be really disappointed. Um, in the show, that would be my only complaint is that they killed they they killed Max Rebo. Um, well, maybe it was like Max Bebo or something. Maybe it was just a similar looking <laughs> robot. Uh, so, um, yeah, I think um, overall, I mean, I, it's, a, it's an easy recommend to watch if you're a Star Wars fan. It's not a hard watch. It's really fun. I think I think there's highlights. Um, there's some low points in the in the in this, but overall, it's highlights, right? Like I think Star Wars mm-hmm. is good. The quality of the show, the, the the they make a great looking show, a great sounding show, always always solid throughout. So yeah. e- easily recommend it. Yeah, weirdly enough, just go watch the last three episodes and just pretend you're watching more Mandalorian because mm-hmm. even the very last episode, there's so much Mando and Baby Yoda in it, you would just assume that yeah. it's Mandalorian. So yeah. I'm actually would be really curious, you know, if you could find a person that just didn't want to watch the Book of Boba Fett, right, and just have yeah. them watch the last three episodes and and just tell them, like, oh, no, this is just more Mandalorian. Like, oh, okay, that's it, kind of weird. But Yeah, two, <laughs> it's, it's Mando 2.5 is what we're yeah. getting while we wait. Um, so yeah, yep. Yeah, that's, that's what we think on that. Um, next week we, uh, have you been, have you, are you caught up on Peacemaker? Yes. I'll caught up. Okay. okay. Well, next week's the last episode. Well, maybe we'll, we'll get a Peacemaker uh, coverage. Yeah. Next week, right? Yeah. We'll do a, we'll do a Peacemaker recap the next week. Yeah. So, um, that's it for the show, Mike. It's time to go start making snacks for the Super Bowl. Uh, so if people know what you're up to, what you're doing, where can they find you at? They can find me at Mike Royer Design on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can read my web comics at pickledcomics.com. Chris, if people want to catch up with you, where can they find you? Find me on Instagram, Valdan87, or Twitter, Valdan, V A L D A N. If people want to know more about the show, what we're doing, um, where can they find us at? They can find us at superheroslate.com. That's the best place to find all the avenues we host our show and to get our awesome show notes. So we talked about a lot of uh, cool stuff in today's show notes. So if you want to see those trailers, that uh, Warner Brothers uh, teaser clip, you know, mm. all of this stuff is in our show notes. It's great. Um, if you want to subscribe, 
If you're not already, we're on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you love to listen to fine podcasts like our own. You can like us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can get merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. Please reach out. We love hearing from you. Uh, if you uh, if you want to be a super fan, you know, send us your uh, Super Bowl ingredients uh, or recipes. Not ingredients. Recipes have ingredients, though, uh, because I'll even look back at them a year later, multiple years later, when I want to make stuff for next year's Super Bowl. Um, and of course, uh, stay tuned. There might possibly be a part two for today, but don't be surprised if you don't see one, if we're not too engaged by what was revealed at the Super Bowl this year, but we love our super fans. So if you want to be the super fan of this show, uh, like Jim, who I'm going to be making his, uh, chili cheese dip today, just all you gotta do is share the show with a friend, share the show with a buddy, stay healthy out there, everybody. And we will be back next week. Like Chris said, with that peacemaker recap. That's right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks for listening, and don't forget to subscribe.